The story begins with a guy waking up on a raft in the middle of the sea, he was surprised that he collided with the ship, for him it was dumb luck. At that moment, he was called out from the ship, advising him not to get involved with this ship, he also called to go to him to punish him. The guy was angry and promised to punish him in return, since he was just sleeping peacefully in his boat and out of nowhere, a ship appeared. The ship's employees warned the captain that this could be a scam and the guy wants to take compensation. The captain heard this and ordered them to bring the guy on board, promising to take money from him for damaging property, the staff supported the captain. Throwing the ladder at him, the guy stood up, the captain said that he doesn't care who the guy is and he wants to be compensated for the damage to the ship, if he tried to escape, he was threatened with death. The guy reproached that his boat was actually damaged because of the ship. Pointing to the ship's passengers, the captain said that they were delayed because of the guy, the guy was surprised that it was the first time he left his island and they immediately tried to blackmail him. The captain only wanted to receive compensation or throw the guy overboard, after which he ordered the guy to be taken. The guy was sure that they couldn't cope with him and challenged them to attack him, the captain became even more angry at his words and ordered the guy to be taken. The subordinates began to try to take the guy, but they did not succeed, because he was very strong, the guy just smiled and threw them into the air. People were shocked by what they saw, the guy asked the captain if he wanted to throw him overboard and feed him to the sharks. The captain ordered two more employees not to be allowed to approach him and to be thrown overboard. Suddenly, a man in a suit interrupted him, asking Captain Tan if it was necessary to do this, since he was putting himself in an awkward position. Turning to Mr. Lu, he tried to explain that he was in no way blackmailing this child, and was only joking. Mr. Lu told the guy that he could stay on board the ship, after which he asked to be taken to his cabin and given a change of clothes so that he would not get sick. The people began to disperse and Mr. Lu also left, suddenly the guy noticed a demon fool on him. The captain asked the guy his name, to which he received the answer, Lin Xiao, the captain promised to remember this name and said that he would allow him to stay on board the ship and he would not have to pay anything, but they don't keep freeloaders on the ship, so he'll have to help them. After these words, the captain ordered Carlson to show where the kitchen is, they walked together and the guy wanted to find out from Carlson who the man in the suit was. Carlson said that Mr. Lu is the CEO of Latushi Dallas Corporation, according to him, he has power, money, status and many beautiful girls. The guy realized that he was a rich man, but wanted to know if everything was normal with him lately. Carlson found it strange that the guy was asking such questions and did not understand what he meant by this. Realizing that he would not get any valuable information from Carlson, he was going to see Mr. Lu himself. Further in the room, a guy asked his father for help, he was in great pain and was enveloped in purple smoke. The father asked Dr. Cheng to do something to help his son. The doctor admitted to Lu Zhong that he did everything possible in his power, since this had never been seen in medicine before, he tried Chinese medicine, but it didn't work, he even did chemotherapy, but it still didn't help. The father promised his son, Xiao Kong, that he would definitely help and find a person who would cure him. Xiao Kong became increasingly enveloped in purple smoke, Lu Zhong asked Dr. Cheng to look after his son, and he would go to the cafeteria and bring food, assuming that his son needed to eat. Lu Zhong was leaving, and Dr. Cheng was sorry because he had never encountered such a disease before. Coming out to the people, strange sounds were made from there, as he walked through the crowd, he wondered what was going on there. He saw the mistresses beating Lin Xiao, they told him to give it back, but to him it was just shawarma. They complained to Lin Xiao that he ate two boxes of shawarma, but Lin Xiao considered his body to be growing and he needed it. Lu Zhong asked not to shout at the boy, since he was just a child, and promised to pay for these two boxes. The housewives took the money and ordered Lin Xiao to return to work afterwards. The issue was resolved and the people dispersed, Lu Zhong asked for three bowls of porridge and two boxes of shawarma to take away. Lin Xiao brought the order to the gentleman and thanked him for his help, asking how he could help him. Lu Zhong said that the guy didn't need this, but he stopped him, explaining that today he had been helped out two times, and now it was his turn. Mr. Lu laughed, wondering how Lin Xiao could help him, Lin Xiao noticed that he 100% has trouble, but does not know what it is, according to him, Lu Zhong had to be sure that the trouble did not just appear. From what he heard, Lu Zhong was surprised and a fool of a demon appeared from him. 
Lu Zhong became interested in the guy's name, the guy introduced himself and asked Mr. Lu not to be so polite. With sweat on his face, he asked Lin Xiao how he knew he had a problem, Lin Xiao assured that it would be difficult to explain and only offered to pay his debt. Lu Zhong was wondering whether he should trust the boy, but in case he could heal Xiao Kong, he decided to take Lin Xiao with him. Lin Xiao was happy that he would finally be able to get out of this place, while Lin Xiao bullied the cleaning ladies, forcing them to wash the dishes themselves, Lu Zhong did not understand whether to believe the boy and whether he could cure. Entering the room, Lu Zhong was greeted by the doctor, he saw a boy behind him and asked about him. Lu Zhong introduced the boy, saying that he brought him there to examine his son. The doctor could not believe it, since the boy was the same age as his son. Even before approaching the bed, since demonic magic, the doctor wanted to protect the boy by not letting him get closer, because Mr. Lu's son was on the verge of death, and if things turned out for the worse, the doctor couldn't bear it. Lin Xiao asked if he looked like a child who couldn't do anything and declared his intentions to cure Mr. Lu's son. The doctor didn't understand what the boy did to fool Lu Zhong and decided to find out if there was any medical review to save this boy, in the case, even if he had medical knowledge, he lacked qualifications and was just a teenager. Introducing himself as a famous doctor in the city of Binhai, he admitted that he could not help the sick boy, and Lin Xiao especially could not. Lin Xiao found this attitude as a doctor to be terrible, Mr. Lu reassured the doctor and asked him to give the boy the opportunity to try, because he invited him himself. Approaching the sick boy, Lin Xiao rolled up his sleeve, he usually did not do this, but it was for his own safety. Taking the boy by the shirt, he began to beat the crap out of him, Mr. Lu immediately rushed over asking what he was doing with his son. Mr. Lu was angry that Lin Xiao repaid so much for the good he had done, the gentleman promised to put the guy in prison for life, because he dared to do this to his son. This is exactly what the doctor was afraid of, he blamed himself for allowing the child to be treated, attributing it all to old age. Suddenly, the doctor called out to the gentleman, turning around, he saw the boy spitting, Lin Xiao wanted to clarify whether he would be sent to prison forever, reproaching him for his bad attitude towards the saviors. Lu Zhong immediately began to apologize and explained that he was only worried about his son, Lin Xiao understood him and turned to the doctor. He wondered if the doctor still thought he was a liar, the doctor also began to apologize, explaining that he had tried everything in the medical books, but nothing worked, and a simple slap in the face helped. Lin Xiao said that this is the Tao of Deity Purification, which has been passed down to his family from generation to generation, and he did not intend to reveal the method. Lu Zhong had a hard time believing this, the doctor was about to take this treatment method and asked Mr. Lu to inform him if anything happened. Lin Xiao stated that by standards, the boy has not yet recovered, Mr. Lu wanted to know what he should do to get his son cured, he offered money, power or influence because he was going to do everything possible in his power. Lin Xiao explained that there are too many prying eyes and ears now, but as long as he is here, he will be fine. Lin Xiao suggested that they talk before they arrived at Bin Hai, Lu Zhong agreed, in response offering to go to a more comfortable place. Entering a certain room, Lin Xiao was surprised, now understanding the phrase, buy with money, he saw a beautiful room and a statue. Sitting down on the sofa, the guy asked Mr. Lu about the seedling shelter, because this is where the guy grew up. Mr. Lu said that this was a great place for real estate, but a few years ago it was closed and demolished. He heard that the owner died in a car accident, most of the children were adopted into good families, he knew nothing more about it. Lin Xiao was sorry that this happened to the orphanage, but he consoled himself with the fact that his mother was taking responsibility for this. Lu Zhong noticed that Lin Xiao looked upset, but the guy replied that he was just tired and was returning to his cabin to rest. Mr. Lu asked to stay here because there was no one there and he should rest well, when leaving, he ordered not to remain silent if anything was needed. Falling onto the bed, Lin Xiao told his mother that he had survived for five years and all his illnesses had been cured, without finishing, he fell asleep. After a while, he stood on the ship and observed beautiful views, Lu Zhong approached him, inquiring about further actions upon arrival in the capital, Mr. Lu was going home and asked about his son's further treatment. Lin Xiao agreed, but first he was going to do something that wouldn't take much time, Lu Zhong didn't mind and asked to contact him when the guy finished. The guy suddenly remembered that he didn't have a mobile phone, 
Lu Zhong gave him his new phone with a SIM card, as well as 100,000 yuan, if Lin Xiu does not have cash, they promised to make him a card later. Lin Xiu was very grateful and turned around and noticed that they were approaching the city, he was glad that he returned home. Then Lin Xiu stood in front of the grave and told his mother that he was at home, he said that he found the island that everyone told him about, there he met a grandmaster who cured him of the disease and, after learning everything he could, he returned. Having laid down the flowers, he was about to leave, when suddenly a young couple appeared behind him. The guy told Xiao Teng that he had been waiting for several years for her heart to fall in love with him, he asked if she agreed to date him. Xiao Teng asked Cheng Renfei not to bother her, since she had already said that she had been in love with someone for a long time, if he did not stop this, she promised to suspend their communication. Cheng Zhenfei considered this a lie, because in his opinion, such a person could not exist, he has known her for a long time, but she has been talking about this man for the last five years. Turning her head, Xiao Teng noticed Lin Xiu leaving, she dropped the flowers and rushed to him with joy that her big brother had returned. Lin Xiu didn't recognize her at first, but she reminded herself, he was glad to see her, noticing that she had grown and become more beautiful. Cheng Zhenfei wondered why she needed someone pretending to be her lover, poorly dressed, when he was there, she disappointed him, because he thought that such a decent girl would not disdain such a method of deception. Lin Xiu decided to ask Xiao Teng who this guy was and why she brought him with her, Xiao Teng admitted that that guy was following her everywhere, and now he was trying to make her his girlfriend. Cheng Zhenfei did not like her words, he began to threaten them, saying that they did not know who he was and could order someone to kill her. Lin Xiu stood in thought, Xiao Teng stopped him, saying that he was an unusual guy. Cheng Renfei saw that Lin Xiu approached him and began to ask him if he came to ask for an apology because he was afraid that he would be killed. But before he could finish speaking, he received a slap in the face, which shocked him, Lin Xiu took his hand, thereby squeezing him, he ordered not to appear near Xiao Teng again, otherwise it would be even worse. Cheng Renfei asked to let him go and Lin Xiu listened to him, then ordered him to get out, when leaving, he stated that the guy would regret this. Xiao Teng said that his family is very rich and lives in a coastal mansion in the city, his family is also involved in shady affairs, so Lin Xiu will have to be careful and, if anything happens, leave the city. Lin Xiu reassured her, assuring her that no one could force him to leave this city. Xiao Teng wondered where he had been these five years, Lin Xiu recalled the time when they were little, his mother talked about a magical island. The girl realized that we were talking about a legend about a god who lived on an island, Lin Xiu confirmed this, saying that he found someone there who taught him and cured his illness, and now he has returned. Xiao Teng noticed that brother is no longer a small child, after all, five years have passed, she believed that she, too, was no longer a child and he could not tell her such lies, it would be fine for her if he didn't want to talk about it. Lin Xiu only assured her that he had indeed met a god who had cured the root disease, he was surprised that she didn't notice the difference in appearance because he looked better now than before. In any case, Xiao Teng was grateful to whatever doctor he was for curing the guy, she wanted to meet him by asking about it. Inside he was pleased, but without showing it he replied that the doctor was dead, Xiao Teng regretted that good people die so quickly. Lin Xiu admitted that there was no person there and he made it all up. Xiao Teng sat on her knees and told her mother that brother Lin had returned, he was no longer, but is now stronger than when they were little, even Cheng Zhenfei could not do anything around him. Not leaving the flowers, they began to leave, Lin Xiu decided to find out where she went after the orphanage closed. Xiao Teng said that at that time, kind people took them in, an elderly couple and grandparents took her in and she now lives with them. She offered to take Lin Xiu to them because they were really good people and if she told them, they would love him too, Lin Xiu agreed. Arriving at the place, discontent was heard from the room, someone said that Chang loves her, but she doesn't accept anything, and what's more, she found herself to be some kind of hooligan who broke his arm, Vice President Chang summoned the man to a meeting today and he had to answer for it. Xiao Ting assumed that this was Uncle Sun Bing, the son of his grandfather, he works for Cheng Zhenfei's father and always tries to push Cheng Zhenfei's love for her. Deciding to go in, Lin Xiu asked Xiao Ting to stay behind him, when they entered, they saw a family sitting at the table. Sun Bing was angry that she dared to return to this house, also bringing a bully with her. Looking at Lin Xiu, 
he ordered him to get out if he didn't want to be beaten, the grandfather intervened, telling him to leave the boy alone. Sun Bin was angry that his grandfather did not understand that because of her he could be fired. Grandfather believed that if a person wants to fire him, he will look at his abilities, no company can fire without harsh reasons by law, but this company is doing business illegally, he hoped that his son would realize that it was better to earn money legally. Sun Bin became even more angry and, as he left, said that he didn't care if no one took care of his grandfather. The door slammed and Grandpa had a heart attack, Xiao Ting rushed to help him, but they calmed her down, explaining this only with her old heart. Noticing Lin Xiao at the entrance, Grandma asked Xiao Teng if he was her boyfriend, Xiao Teng asked Lin Xiao not to listen to her grandmother and introduced him as a friend from the orphanage who had known each other for ten years. Grandmother was glad that they had been childhood sweethearts, as she immediately liked him, Lin Xiao noticed that Xiao Teng grew up in a good family, her grandmother is kind and her grandfather takes care of her. He was pleased to meet them and after introducing himself, he thanked them for all these years of caring for Xiao Tang. The grandmother denied this, saying that it was their pleasure, she invited the guy to eat and he immediately agreed. Sun Bin stood at the entrance and talked with Mr. Cheng, asking about further actions, because the same bully was now with him. He offered to take several thugs and beat him, breaking his bones, Chen Bo, Cheng Zhenfei's father asked if this thug was there. He explained that he could not deal with the child, now their chairman and main shareholder were throwing a party in honor of his son's recovery from a serious illness, according to his sources, this was done by some miracle doctor, whom the whole world of medicine had not seen, therefore, the order was to do nothing for now. From what he heard, Sun Bin was shocked, because there is someone better than Dr. Cheng from the capital. Chen Bo considered this to be a lie, since Dr. Cheng had been looking for a cure for this child for a long time, Sun Bin agreed with him, asking about the meeting today. Cheng Zhenfei's father was ready to meet with him and ordered him to keep that guy under observation, then he was going to solve this problem. Sun Bin asked you to trust him, promising not to let you down, after these words, the conversation was over. Cheng Zhenfei could not understand the miracle of the doctor, I suggest you ignore and deal with his problem now. The father explained that it was not the miracle doctor, but the fact that he was related to an important person at a critical moment. Next, Xiao Tang and Lin Xiao were having lunch at the table with their grandparents, she offered him to take various foods from the table. Suddenly, Lin Xiao received a phone call from Lu Zhong, Lu Zhong decided to find out if Lin Xiao was still busy. Lin Xiao talked about having dinner with the elderly and asked about Xiao Kong's treatment, Lu Zhong announced a party that he and his company were throwing in honor of his son's recovery, he wanted Lin Xiao to participate, there would be many influential people there who wanted to meet him. Lin Xiao immediately wanted to know if he could take one more person with him, Lu Zhong was only happy to see them and asked for an address so he could send someone to pick them up. Lin Xiao only asked to leave the driver's phone number, and he would deal with the rest himself, after that, he approached his grandparents to get permission to take Xiao Teng to an event. Everyone agreed and Lin Xiao left them money when he left, grandfather did not understand what this meant, but Lin Xiao explained it as stealing his granddaughter for a wonderful dinner. Going outside, Xiao Teng wondered where he got so much money, but Lin Xiao didn't understand why he had so many questions that he couldn't answer. At that moment, a limousine arrived and Lin Xiao promised to take Xiao Teng to have some fun. The drivers apologized and asked if he was Mr. Lin Xiao, Lin Xiao confirmed this and asked in response. The driver was uncomfortable and introduced himself as old manly, he said that he was their driver for today, he was here to take them to today's event. Sitting inside, Xiao Ting wondered where Lin Xiao got such a limousine that came to him, Lin Xiao asked to just enjoy the trip, because the evening was just beginning, and then there would be many more surprises. Arriving at the place, Xiao Teng was shocked that they had arrived at the Gaixiong Palace, the driver said that today they would have dinner there. She still couldn't believe it and asked Lin Xiao if they had made a mistake, since according to her rumors, this place only serves special people, ordinary people like them cannot even enter there. Lin Xiao treated them and invited them inside, walking inside, she couldn't wait to see this place. Inside, in addition to the guests, there were also Cheng Zhenfei and Sun Bing sent by his father, Cheng Zhenfei was bored and asked to help him with Xiao Teng, because this girl is so stubborn. Sun Bin assured him that he would do everything possible to help, 
he had already made a promise to his father that he would deal with this problem and that he would also deal with the guy soon. Cheng Renfei expected good results from him and Sun Bing agreed with this, he decided to ask the guy how much he knew about the miracle doctor. Cheng Zhenfei promised to introduce them when he met his father and the doctor, he himself does not know much about him, only that he is important to the chairman, Sun Bin was grateful for the opportunity. Turning around, they saw Lin Xiao and Xiao Teng walking there. Cheng Renfei was surprised that this bully was also there, considering that he had been humiliated this morning, he was going to be ruthless in front of Xiao Ting this time. He loudly called the guards and announced an uninvited guest. Security ran up and asked about the uninvited guest, he pointed at Lin Xiao and Xiao Teng, saying that hooligans were being allowed into Gaixiong Palace. Xiao Teng grabbed Lin Xiao, but he calmed her down, the head of the security immediately ordered them thrown out. Cheng Renfei clarified his wish that the guards should beat Lin Xiao, break his bones, and after that they could throw him out of here. Xiao Ting became even more frightened and stood behind Lin Xiao, she didn't know what to do now, but Lin Xiao reassured her, saying that they would stand their ground. The security guard approached the boy and apologized because it was their job, suddenly the driver stopped him, asking about his intentions for their guest. Cheng Renfei was surprised that the boy was a relative of old Manly, but did not consider it a problem since he was just a driver. The security was confused and did not know who to listen to, Cheng Zhenfei did not like this and ordered action. Old Manly explained that Cheng Renfei didn't even know who this young master was and ordered him not to do anything he would regret, hearing that he was not related to Old Manly, Cheng Renfei thought about it even more. He admitted that he didn't care because Lin Xiao had to kneel today after everything he had done. The driver was told by the chairman not to let the guy do anything on his own, as Lin Feng values him highly, deciding to stop this, he announced that he would pay $10,000 to anyone who beat Cheng Zhenfei. The security heard this and rushed to beat the guy, Old Man Li apologized for his rude methods, but he had to do it this way. Lin Xiao asked Xiao Teng to wait for him, saying that he needed to deal with something. Sun Bin stopped Old Man Li, saying that he didn't even realize what he had done, namely, he beat Chen Bo's son, according to him, this will not end well for him, now even the chairman will not save him. Old Man Li explained to Sun Bin that this was their personal squabble and he should not interfere, since he did not know the whole truth. At that moment, the door opened and Chen Bo, vice president of Jirwei Group, wondered who dared to offend his son and ordered him to stop now. Approaching his beaten son, he told him who did it, Chen Bo was angry and promised to avenge him. Chen Bo began to find out who they were working for and why they did this, Old Man Li said to leave these people alone, for he had ordered them to do so. Chen Bo was even more angry than before because an ordinary driver dared to beat his son. Old Man Li was going to explain everything, but Chen Bo was not going to listen to it and took out money from his bag and said that he would pay $30,000 to the one who breaks their legs. One of the guards immediately rushed at Old Man Li, but he was protected by Lin Xiao, he gave advice that there are people in this world who should not be insulted, and he never is. At that moment, Lu Zhong entered and ordered everyone to stop this chaos, Chen Bo explained that these people beat his son because of some garbage. Chen Bo didn't have time to finish speaking when Lu Zhong asked about Lin Xiao's condition, if anything had happened to him. Lin Xiao replied that everything was fine, there were just flies buzzing around. Lu Zhong asked to leave this to him, promising that they would not be disturbed anymore, and they could continue to enjoy themselves in peace. Old Man Li told Lu Zhong that he tried to stop them, but Mr. Lu knew it, turning to Chen Bo, he ordered to ask his son to apologize to Lin Xiao now. Cheng Zhenfei got angry and pointed to his wounds, saying that they did it, Mr. Lu did not believe this and knew that he himself was to blame for everything. Chen Bo interrupted his son and told him to apologize, Cheng Renfei bowed to Lin Xiao and Xiao Teng and apologized. Deciding that they were done here, Lin Xiao invited Xiao Teng to take some food to eat. Mr. Lu apologized to them again, but Lin Xiao offered to go to his son. Arriving at the room, Lin Xiao asked Xiao Teng to stay there for a while as he had to fulfill his promise. Entering his son Mr. Lu, he was already in good condition and greeted Lin Xiao, Lin Xiao asked about his well-being and his son thanked him. Lu Zhong asked Lin Xiao about what happened, Lin Xiao was not sure whether they would believe him or not and stated that it was not a disease, but a curse, asking if Mr. Lu has offended anyone recently. 
Lin Xiao explained that Xiao Kong was cursed by someone and if they want to find out the source of the problem, then the first thing they need to do is find the person who cast the curse. Lu Zhong admitted that this was true and he could not escape karma, he's had a conflict over the past couple of months. In recent months, they have been having problems with another company, Fuchian Group, they, Jirwei Group, were in a trade war with Fuchian Group, their company had a huge financial pool, so it couldn't even be called a war, however, the people from the Fuchian Group targeted Mr. Lu for some reason. They began to intimidate him to stop bidding for the block, otherwise he would regret it, Mr. Lu thought that these were just pathetic attempts at intimidation by their opponent, but they looked a little desperate, although he didn't pay attention to it. He, according to him, the head of Fuchian Group is just a puppet, all the real operations are carried out by his subordinates, in just two years, they received an income of several million dollars, and their company is now valued at several billion dollars. Lin Xiao noted that such rapid growth for a company was quite abnormal, suggesting that some evil was involved. Mr. Lu wondered if they did this, but Lin Xiao explained that they people would not understand this, in his opinion, this company is probably using dirty tricks to get more profit, Lu Zhong was wondering what kind of techniques these were. Lin Xiao suspected that if they didn't meet him, then Xiao Kong's condition would get worse until he was dying, then the president of the Fuchian group called Lu Zhong and set some conditions, most likely, he would have demanded to give up the land that he received in exchange for Xiao Kong's life or something like that. Lu Zhong realized that this was a piece of land and they could put their son's life at risk, having become convinced of the horror of human nature. He asked Lin Xiao if he could help him, Lin Xiao reassured him that he stopped the spread of the curse and this should relieve the symptoms. Lu Zhong asked about future plans, but Lin Xiao stated that they would only act as if nothing had happened, and then they will go to war, because these guys will try to attack Xiao Kong again, according to him, when this happens, they will fall into a trap. Next to Binhai City Villa, there was a man and a woman there, and there was a knock on their door. It was an old ghost, the ninth hegemony, an evil wizard, he informed Jiang Zhong that they had a problem, Lu Zhong found someone who healed his son. Jiang Zhong was shocked because he was told that the plan was foolproof, the evil wizard assured that this was just an unfortunate piece of land and asked to forget about it, in his opinion, there was no need to offend someone who might have a strong cultivator behind him. Jiang Zhong didn't understand what the old man was talking about, because he knows what he can do, the evil wizard did not know what this meant, but they explained to him that this meant the need for this piece of land. He was ordered to cast some kind of curse or something like that, to help get this land and he would be given the help he needed from Uncle Jiang Zhong. The evil wizard agreed, but if he refused, he promised to kill Jiang Zhong. He was leaving, and Jiang Zhong was going to see who would kill who first. Next, Lin Xiao and Lu Zhong sat and waited, Lu Zhong was not sure that people would come to kill his son, because they had already been waiting for several hours. Lin Xiao replied that he was already here, from what he heard, Lu Zhong wanted to know where exactly he was here. Looking at the door, Lin Xiao saw a demon fool and a flying purple skull, he gathered his strength and hit that skull. From such power, the evil wizard began to bleed from his mouth, he was shocked by such a strong cultivator, assuming that he had already reached the purification realm or even stronger. The door opened and the evil wizard began to run, Lin Xiao saw him and chased after him. The evil wizard was scared because he couldn't believe his eyes that it was a child, he assumed that this was the heir of the hidden sect. Lin Xiao ordered him to stop, turning around, the evil wizard kindly addressed him, immediately saying that he could serve him. Lin Xiao was surprised that this was an evil wizard because he did not look threatening, he said that he had heard about the wizard's love of curses, he found a curse there and destroyed it in order to curse himself, this was done in order to create a completely new curse that could be tried on a new curse, inviting the wizard to test it. The evil wizard immediately began to apologize, explaining that he did not want to do this and was forced to do so, if he knew that he could offend such a strong and powerful person as Lin Xiao, he would never have dared. Lin Xiao asked if the evil wizard was sure that Jiang Zhong's company could force him to do this, the wizard, being frightened, admitted that this was the truth. Lin Xiao did not believe in this, since the people of their world do not even have business with mortals, the wizard said that they are not ordinary people and he does these meager things for Jiang Zhong, because behind him is a person whom he cannot afford to offend. The guy became interested in this man, 
but the evil wizard could not say this, because if he said a word, falling to his knees, he asked to be released, promising that this would be the last time he would offend Lin Xiu. Lin Xiu agreed, but on the condition that the wizard destroy his cultivation, the wizard could not say anything and the guy saw that he was scared, so he offered to do it personally. Then Lin Xiu returned to the room and Lu Zhong began asking if the problem had been resolved. Lin Xiu said that it was only a small evil wizard, but his son was no longer in danger. Lu Zhong was happy about this news and told his son to thank Lin Xiu. Lin Xiu answered him happily and asked Lu Zhong to stay at his hotel as he had something to do, Mr. Lu said that everything was ready and promised to accompany him. After a while, Lin Xiu lay on the bed and thought about his strength, he was stuck in the purification realm for three years, he wondered how much longer was left before the breakthrough. The master told him that his sworn brother was in the city, but Lin Xiu was confused where to look for him, this city was becoming more interesting for him, but no one knew what he was hiding, so he was going to be practical and train as usual. Next, Wang Yong wondered who could defeat the evil wizard, because it was strange. The evil wizard said that Lu Zhong had strong support and he was not his opponent. Deciding that he would no longer have to carry out his orders, Wang Yong plunged his sword into him. Wang Yong promised Jiang Zhong that he would deal with that guy, Jiang Zhong thanked Wang Yong for this. The next day, Lin Xiu slept in his room, Xiao Ting snuck in and woke him up. Lin Xiu got dressed and wondered why she woke him up so early, Xiao Ting said that she wanted to take him to see the sights of their city, so she had to get up early. Arriving at the Valley of Happiness, Lin Xiu saw a huge ferris wheel and asked if this was the place she was talking about, Xiao Ting confirmed and reminded that Lin Xiu wanted to go there as a child. Xiao Ting ran and pulled him along, offering to try cotton candy, but he refused. Unexpectedly, she saw Jiang Ying with a certain man. She called out to her and the man looked at Xiao Tang. Xiao Ting said that she came to Happiness Alley for fun, also asking about the man next to her. Jiang Ying introduced him as her boyfriend Li Jia. After talking a little, she stated that now they had other things to do and wanted to meet at another time. Li Jia asked her why she didn't talk about her classmate earlier, Jiang Ying didn't like this and suggested leaving quickly. Li Jia wanted to get to know each other better so that they could become close enough, reaching out to Xiao Tang and asking her name. Lin Xiu knocked his hand away and ordered him to do without his hands. Li Jia did not like this and asked whether Lin Xiu had any problems, because he looked like a child who wanted problems. After these words, he reached out to Xiao Tang, explaining that children who do not show proper respect should be punished. Lin Xiu could not stand it and hit him with such force that he was shocked, Jiang Ying rushed to help him. Standing up, he praised Lin Xiu for the blow, and now he was going to see how he would deal with the consequences. Jiang Ying asked to leave everything as it is and leave, asking if he would do this for her sake. Li Jia responded by hitting her, saying that she could not play with him as she wanted and had no value to him. Xiao Tang was about to protect her, but Lin Xiu walked ahead of her and attacked Li Jia, security immediately rushed to help him and ask what happened to his face. Lin Xiu told Xiao Tang to accompany her classmate home and to be careful along the way. Li Jia became angry and challenged Lin Xiu to strike again, a crowd of people began to surround him. Lin Xiu hit Li Jia with great speed so that he fell to the floor, one of the guards assured that Lin Xiu does not know who Li Jia is and now he is a corpse. After these words, he dealt with a couple of other guards and, approaching the remaining ones, asked who was next. Promising that today none of them would leave this place, he rushed at them, suddenly, a monk appeared in front of Lin Xiu and asked on his behalf to release these people. Lin Xiu thought that this was the sixth Buddhist monk, but he introduced himself as just a wandering monk from Ijin. Lin Xiu did not know him and said that he did not dare ask for this favor. The monk asked to have mercy on these poor souls, because they had already received a wound. Lin Xiu refused because these people committed sin by committing various atrocities under the leadership of their boss, according to him. Today he taught them a lesson so that they would not do such things again and ordered the monk to leave. The monk asked the young man if this meant that he would not allow him to leave, Lin Xiu admitted that with all due respect, a monk should mind his own business, if they try to interfere with him, he will deal with him. The monk decided that he would teach Lin Xiu a lesson in humility and threw a blow, which Lin Xiu easily caught. Lin Xiu believed that human nature never changes and repeated his words about indifference to the six-rank level of the monarch's power. 
After these words, he pushed him away and ordered him to leave, out of the corner of his eye, Lin Xiao noticed that Xiao Teng had not left, he was interested in this. Xiao Teng was worried about him and asked about further actions. They left, and from the side they watched Wang Yong, who asked if Lin Xiao, the monarch, had at least the sixth level. The monarch said that this youth easily defeated him and warned that Lin Xiao was not the one Wang Yong should insult. Wang Yong assured that even if Lin Xiao was at level 5, he would still not be a hindrance, thanking the monk for his contribution, the monk left him, hoping for success. Returning back, Xiao Teng was amazed by Lin Xiao and his strength, with which he punished the guards and Li Jia, Lin Xiao replied that protecting her was not a problem for him. Suddenly, Jiang Ying began to cry, Xiao Ting began to ask her if this had anything to do with the fact that they beat up her boyfriend. Jiang Ying admitted that she did not care about his life, she was only worried about her parents, if something happened to them, she didn't know whether she would survive or not. Xiao Teng wondered about her parents, Jiang Ying assumed that it was too late, since her parents were in the last stage of cancer and if they did not continue chemotherapy treatment, they would not live more than a few days, she needed money for their treatment. Lin Xiao realized that she was with Li Jia because she needed money to save her parents. Xiao Teng tried her best to support her and offered some of her money, if they are not enough, they will look for a solution. Jiang Ying explained that only Li Jia could give her enough to save her parents. Lin Xiao asked Jiang Ying if she could take him to his parents, assuming that she could help them. Jiang Ying got angry, thinking that he took it as a joke, after all, cancer cannot be cured like a cold. Lin Xiao wanted to help, offer his services, since she is Xiao Ting's friend, if she doesn't trust him, then he can't help her anymore. Xiao Ting persuaded Jiang Ying, saying that he was actually strong in medicine, one of his patients called him a miracle doctor. Jiang Ying stated that if he could save her parents, then she would do anything for him. Next to the first city hospital, Binhai City, Chief Physician Tang Wei asked Xiao Li which two late-stage cancer patients remained in the hospital with an unpaid bill. Xiao Li reported that these were the two parents who were still waiting for chemotherapy, their daughter promised them that she would bring the money tonight. Tang Wei scolded Xiao Li for her naivety as she had seen such cases before, according to him, if the patient had money, they would have already paid, Xiao Li didn't understand what the boss wanted to say. Looking at his watch, he ordered guards to be sent there and these people escorted out, he believed that if they could not pay, then they should not occupy the beds. Xiao Li was shocked by what she heard, Tang Wei ordered them to hurry up and not force him to repeat it, since soon Mr. Cheng Chiu would be giving them a lecture and he should not see these two patients. Next in the ward, the policeman asked Xiao Li if they were serious about doing this, because he thought it was harsh to throw people out like this, but Xiao Li understood that these were orders from her superiors and they could not do anything. As they began to remove the oxygen tube from the man, they were stopped by Jiang Ying, Lin Xiao was dissatisfied with human nature that had fallen so low. Xiao Li began to make excuses that their boss forced them to do this, he ordered them to be escorted out of there because they had not yet paid for the treatment, Lin Xiao was surprised that money was really more important than someone's life. At that moment, from behind, the head doctor explained that this was a hospital, not a charity center, since these people do not pay, they cannot afford to treat them. Turning around, Lin Xiao asked if it was the same doctor who gave the order, Tang Wei confirmed this, in this case, Lin Xiao believed that he did not deserve to be a doctor without a sense of ethics. According to Tang Wei, he is only following the medical procedure according to the law set by the hospital, if he breaks these rules, it will be unfair for him towards other people. Lin Xiao didn't believe Tang Wei and was already ready to kill him. Jiang Ying interrupted them, saying that there was no need to kick her parents out and they would pay right away. Tang Wei advised him to hurry up because he didn't have much time. Lin Xiao stopped Jiang Ying, wondering if Tang Wei could guarantee her parents' healing if she paid. After remaining silent for a while, Tang Wei laughed, asking if Lin Xiao knew what her parents were sick with. Lin Xiao was surprised that he could not cure some late-stage stomach cancer. Tang Wei challenged Lin Xiao to cure the cancer himself and asked him to name someone who could do it, Lin Xiao stated that he knows and this person is himself. Tang Wei still didn't believe it and just laughed, but Lin Xiao wasn't funny, because he was considered a deceiver. Having gathered, the chief doctor ordered to pay the money or leave. At this moment, in the corridor, 
Dr. Chen was shown their inpatient department, boasting that they kept it in excellent condition. Diar, Chen was so impressed that he called it amazing, they passed the office in which there was the head doctor and Lin Xiao and the others. Tang Wei was shocked that the mystical doctor had already arrived, although it was too early, he rushed to Dr. Chen, introducing himself as the head physiotherapist at this hospital. Jiang Ying saw Dr. Chen and ran to him, falling to her knees, she asked to save her parents, Tang Wei was angry that she would do such a thing, but Dr. Chen was uncomfortable and asked her about what happened. Tang Wei shouted for help from the guards, calling for Jiang Ying to be thrown out of there, Dr. Chen asked her to calm down and calmly talk about what happened. Worried, Tang Wei said that the girl's parents were in the final stages of stomach cancer, according to him, Jiang Ying refuses to pay for treatment and their hospital is not able to help her. Dr. Chen reassured her, saying that a doctor should have a doctor's heart, therefore, they will never give up on any patient, regardless of whether they are curable or not. Jiang Ying told him that Tang Wei was going to throw her parents out of the hospital because she couldn't pay and, according to him, her parents would die within a couple of days. The doctors who came were shocked by what they heard, Tang Wei tried to justify himself, but he was interrupted by the doctor who was with Dr. Chen to clarify the validity of this information. Tang Wei denied it, saying that her parents were fine and were still recovering. He was condemned for his heartlessness, and Dr. Chen ordered him to be taken to her parents to examine them. Entering the room, he was shocked because he saw Lin Xiao and began asking where he came from. According to Lin Xiao, he came to visit his friend's parents, Jiang Ying was surprised that Lin Xiao knew the mystical doctor. Dr. Chen did not dare to call himself a mystical doctor while standing opposite Lin Xiao. Tang Wei thought it was some kind of joke, but Dr. Chen denied it, saying that he was unable to cure Lu Zhuan's son, but the man who stood in front of them was able to do it. Jiang Ying screamed in surprise that Lin Xiao could actually cure her parents, Lin Xiao repeated his words from the very beginning. Dr. Chen asked Lin Xiao if he could cure stomach cancer, Tang Wei noted that this was impossible, because we are talking about stomach cancer. Dr. Chen asked about the possibility of Lin Xiao sharing with them the secret of how exactly he was going to treat patients, Lin Xiao was going to use an advanced acupuncture technique. Tang Wei got angry and wanted them to stop talking nonsense, but Dr. Chen told everyone to shut up. Everyone fell silent, and Lin Xiao began to take needles and insert them into Jiang Ying's father, the people there were shocked, and the father woke up. Dr. Chen turned around and asked the doctors, proving that Lin Xiao was indeed a real mystical doctor. He approached Lin Xiao to ask if he was accepting students. Lin Xiao did not understand when he asked if Dr. Chen wanted him to be his teacher, Dr. Chen believed that learning is the eternal goal in life and all he asks Lin Xiao to do is share knowledge. Lin Xiao apologized because he could not pass on his medical techniques after swearing an oath to his teacher. Dr. Chen understood him and offered to become an honorary doctor at this hospital, they would be grateful to him, in that case. Lin Xiao thought about asking to work as a doctor, but Dr. Chen explained that he would sometimes come to the hospital and observe, according to him, the hospital will reward him for his generous work. Lin Xiao was interested in this proposal and was going to think about it. After a while, Lin Xiao and Xiao Ting left, and Dr. Chen asked him to be careful, he also hoped that he would respond to his proposal soon. Lin Xiao and Xiao Teng were walking, it was already evening and he offered to have a snack, Xiao Teng definitely wanted to snack on the noodles, she knew a great restaurant nearby and wanted to go there. Arriving at the ramen house, Lin Xiao asked him to order something for him, while he went to the toilet. Walking into the restroom, he saw a rank 7 monk who didn't look strong to him, he called out to Lin Xiao, ordering him to stand still because he wanted to tell him something. Lin Xiao continued to leave, but the monk became angry because he was talking to him, he stopped and turned around and asked about it. Lin Xiao turned around and reproached the rank 7 cultivator, asking what was needed from him. A guy approached him and introduced himself as Wang Yang, but Lin Xiao had to call him king, according to him, he came to improve relations on behalf of the Taoist alliance. Lin Xiao thought about this alliance and remembered that when he was on the unrivaled island, his mentor mentioned the situation in China regarding the various factions in the world. The entire department was divided into six parts, Buddha, demons, magicians, ghosts and devil cultivators, and the strongest of them turned out to be the Taoist alliance. 
Wang Yang noticed that Lin Xiao knew about the influence of the alliance and it should have been simple, he asked Lin Xiao if this was the person who was helping Ji Hui and told him to leave everything for him. Lin Xiao realized that he is one of those who is behind all this Jiang Zhong and whom the old magician is afraid of. Wang Yang laughed, noting that they were not afraid of him, but of the one who was behind Mr. Jiang Zhong. Grabbing Lin Xiao by the shoulder, he decided to give advice so that he should not go where he is not asked, because he can find problems for himself. Lin Xiao reproached Wang Yang that a seventh-rank cultivator deigned to lecture him, but Wang Yang asked him not to try his luck on him. Lin Xiao was about to leave and said that there was no time to play their alliance, after all, people like him constantly bother Lin Xiao. Wang Yang found it funny that a rank six brat imagined himself to be a genius and dared to insult someone who was stronger. After a while, Lin Xiao finished his noodles, Xiao Teng wondered what they would do next and whether Lin Xiao had plans for today. Today, he wanted to find out about Chen Dong Janyui, Li Han and Wang Yong and the families they live with, Lin Xiao was very worried about them, so he couldn't let them go so easily. Besides, five years have already passed and he already misses them, Xiao Teng was planning to go with him. They were walking and Lin Xiao was depressed, because there were no clues, he couldn't even imagine how long their search would take. Xiao Ting advised not to give up hope so abruptly, Lin Xiao wanted to think about this carefully. Suddenly, Xiao Ting said that she knew where to start. Afterwards, they came to an abandoned area, but Xiao Ting doubted that Zhen Jinji lived somewhere there. Lin Xiao repeated the words of the policeman, about the only remaining address. This is here. Suddenly there were screams that someone was being killed, the crowd was chasing some guy, promising to break his legs. Lin Xiao and Xiao Ting did not interfere with this and only pressed themselves against the wall, Lin Xiao was convinced by the words that the slums were an unpredictable place and wondered what the purpose of chasing this boy was. Xiao Ting noticed that the guy running past them was probably Zhen Jinji. Lin Xiao doubted this since Zhen Jinaji was very thin, he asked Xiao Ting if she had made a mistake, but she definitely remembered that Zhen Jinji had a mole on his forehead, like the same guy. In this case, Lin Xiao left her there, telling her to wait while he dealt with the hooligans. Zhen Jinji reached a dead end and was surprised that he had made a mistake somewhere, finally convincing myself that this is the end. Turning to the hooligans, he asked them if they were tired of chasing him, because they had all run quite a distance. One of the hooligans said that the boss had no more patience, because he was given a couple of days, but he ran away, now he had to pay or he would die. Zhen Jinji was shocked by this statement because he did not borrow money from them and has been saying this since the beginning. According to the bully, Zian Jinji's father's debts are also his debts, urging him to pay now. Zhen Jinji's stepfather was an alcoholic, and Zhen Jinji himself was taken from an orphanage, after his death, his stepfather left all his debts for drinking to him. Zhen Jinji did not know what to do and asked to attack him, because he had no money anyway. Having thrust his hands into his pockets, the bully was convinced that there was nothing. He couldn't believe they had come this far and was about to leave. Zen Jinji exhaled, but someone approached him, angry, he screamed and declared that he had no money at all. Lin Xiao recalled whether he was the thin one before, asking if anyone recognized him. Zen Jinji realized that it was Lin Xiao, he was wondering how he rose from the dead, because he died. Lin Xiao grinned that he would not die from such a trifle and Zen Jinji had fun cursing him. The guy considered this place unsuitable for conversation and ordered to follow him, suddenly he stopped and changed his mind for a moment about doing this, since it could bring problems to him, in response, offering to follow him at a distance. After a while they arrived at the place, Zen Jinji quickly let them inside with caution, but someone still managed to take a photo of him from the street. Zen Jinji noticed that Xiao Teng was also here and she had grown into a beauty, Xiao Teng noticed that in such a short time, he had become so fat that it was unrecognizable. He didn't think that he could return to his previous shape, blaming Rice for everything, pointing to his excess weight, he said that he was left with a huge debt and the only way was to eat all the food and spend his money. Zen Jinji felt bad for not having anything to treat them at home, Xiao Teng invited him to have dinner with him in the evening. He immediately refused what he heard, because he did not want to involve them in any problems. Lin Xiao asked how much Zen Jinji owed them, Xiao Ting panicked that he was in debt. Zen Jinji calculated and said that the debt was approximately $100,000, now he couldn't afford that kind of money, 
no matter what he did. Lin Xiao felt uncomfortable because he was asking about the principal amount of the debt, wondering how it became so huge. According to Zen Jinji, this is all because of his stepfather, who left everything to him, Lin Xiao promised to look for ways to help him, because it is bad to be chased every day. At Zen Jinji was shocked because we are talking about $100,000, Lin Xiao only intended to give them the main amount. Zen Jinji laughed and asked not to joke like that, otherwise in this case he could have done it from the very beginning, having already paid off the debt. Xiao Ting interrupted them and assured them that they should not underestimate Lin Xiao, according to her, he is quite strong, none of the bullies can defeat him. The guy agreed, because he couldn't refuse the girl, Lin Xiao asked to be taken to them, and he promised to sort out the rest. Zen Jinji had nothing to answer and wondered why they were there and how they found him in the first place, Xiao Ting spoke about the police station, when he was adopted, his address was registered there. Lin Xiao remembered that he wanted to find out about Cheng Janyui, Wang Yang, and Li Hanqi, because the police did not have their places of residence. After thinking a little, he explained that he didn't remember much of it, but he remembered something strange about that day, a large and expensive car came and took them away. Lin Xiao assumed that it was someone rich, also wondering whether all the guys were taken away or separately. Zen Jinji told about the different cars in which the boys were taken away separately, according to him, suddenly three elite cars arrived and took them away, they envied them, and he and a couple of other guys who stayed later went to ordinary families. Xiao Ting didn't remember any of this, Zen Jinji recounted a memory of her being inside the orphanage and crying because of the heat. Xiao Ting recalled some of this, not believing how upset she was, Lin Xiao wanted to know something else, such as the license plate number of the car or the surname of the family who took them. Zen Jinji explained that no one would have noticed this since they were children. Suddenly he remembered, that year the people who came to them were all bald, Lin Xiao was surprised by this information and decided to find out if they looked like monks. Zen Jinji confirmed this, believing that he could not forget something so strange, Lin Xiao responded by thanking him for his help. Zen Jinji was pleased, noticing that Lin Xiao was trying to be a big brother to everyone and was glad that he could help them. Lin Xiao responded by suggesting how to deal with the creditors as an elder brother, since the time had already come to end all this. Zen Jinji was surprised by what he heard, because he thought it was a cruel joke. Half an hour ago, Fu Ji was asked if he was sure that there was someone else in Zen Jinji's house. Fu Ji said that he saw them with his own eyes, a guy and a girl walked in there, presumably with money. Zen Jinji asked him to repeat whether Lin Xiao was serious when he said this now. At that moment, the door swung open and people declared that it was time to pay off their debt. The guy saw Lin Xiao and was horrified, not understanding why he was there, Lin Xiao asked if these were the same creditors, Zen Jinji only said that it was their fault. Lin Xiao came closer to him, but he wanted to run away from there, Lin Xiao grabbed him by the collar and clarified that he remembered him. The guy began to make excuses that about the girl, he really didn't know that she was Lin Xiao's girlfriend, if he knew that she was his girlfriend, he wouldn't even rock the boat. Lin Xiao let go and decided to forget it, as this is human nature, he wanted to pay off his friend's debt and asked how much he owed. Turning to Zen Jinji, he stated that he had to tell about his friend, Lin Xiao did not want to wait and suggested quickly naming the price of the debt. Turning to Fu Ji, the guy asked him why he didn't tell about Zen Jinji's repaid debt, believing that it would dishonor him in front of Lin Xiao. Fu Ji immediately began to apologize and after that they left. Zen Jinji was surprised that all this turned out to be true, Xiao Ting patted him on the shoulder and assured him that everything was fine. Next, Wang Yong was at a party and was asked if he was happy with everything, Wang Yong just pointed at some girl and asked to call her. The man called out to the girl and called her over. Wang Yong ordered to sit next to him, tonight he wanted her to keep him company. The man asked Wang Yong, wanting to clarify about that incident, Wang Yong assured that that guy was just nothing, he could negotiate with him without any problems. Hearing this, he declared that he had a good idea, Wang Yong became interested in this. At this time, Zen Jinji, along with Lin Xiao and Xiao Tang, were celebrating, Zen Jinji thanked Lin Xiao and said that he had not relaxed so much for a long time, Lin Xiao believed that there was no need to thank him. Suddenly, he remembered his meeting with Wang Yong last month, Lin Xiao was unhappy, thinking that he could have told about this earlier. 
Zen Jinji remembered that he met him in their old orphanage yard, now it is a park, after these words, he asked not to take everything seriously, since he's not sure that it's him, he just looks a lot like Wang Yong. He clarified that it was a bald monk dressed in Taoist or Buddhist clothes, Lin Xiu did not believe that this was a monk. According to Zen Jinji, the strangest thing was that the monk walked into the alley and magically disappeared. Xiao Ting couldn't believe that the pervert Wang Yang had become a monk, Lin Xiu confirmed this and there was some incident. In the evening, Lin Xiu and Xiao Ting were walking, Xiao Ting wondered if he was going back to the hotel, Lin Xiu planned to do this after he escorted her home. Xiao Ting offered to stay with him at the hotel because her parents were not at home right now, they were just visiting, Lin Xiu agreed. Somewhere outside, Wang Yong was spending time with a girl, a guy approached him and informed him that their target had returned. Wang Yong heard this and suggested that the girl continue later, he told Lin Xiu not to blame him for his death later, since he could not distinguish good from bad. Later, Lin Xiu sat in his room and listened to tunes from his phone, Xiao Teng came to him and was about to watch TV with him, but after half an hour she fell asleep. After picking her up and placing her on the bed, there was a knock on the door, it was Xiao Kong's father, who had previously apologized for disturbing him at such a late hour, but Lin Xiu insisted that he was not going to sleep yet. As a token of gratitude, Lin Xiu was handed the card, explaining it as a humble gesture of gratitude. Lin Xiu was embarrassed, he just didn't have any money and he wanted to clarify how much was on this card. According to my father, there was a million dollars, if anything else is needed, Lin Xiu can safely turn to him, and in return he only asks to protect his son. Lin Xiu considered the sum of a million dollars to be too much for him, but Xiao Kong's father insisted that he was his son's benefactor, and there was no price for that. He thanked his father again and promised that as long as he was in this hotel, he would protect Xiao Kong. They were just about to leave when Lin Xiu remembered that he needed help, he wanted to go to a scientific university and asked if it was possible. For Xiao Kong's father, this seemed like an easy question and he suggested discussing it later, because it was already late. After saying goodbye, Lin Xiu received a message from which he was horrified and immediately began to run. He was sent a photo of Zen Jinji tied up and in order for him to survive, Lin Xiu had to come to the valley of the mountainous region. Standing on the street in absolute silence, he waited for someone to take him to his destination. At that moment, a car arrived and the driver specified the destination, hearing that Lin Xiu needed to go to the valley of the mountainous region, he immediately asked about the purpose of the trip. Lin Xiu didn't understand why the driver was so scared, the driver said that about three years ago, the road leading to the valley was closed and no one knew why. Some say that ghosts live there now, Lin Xiu thought about it and suggested that this place was closed due to the fact that it is an ancient resting place, many artifacts were preserved there. All his guesses boiled down to the assumption of a ghost doctor, the driver began to convince Lin Xiu of the truth of his words, according to him, an acquaintance of his left a couple in love there, they set up camp and asked to be picked up the next morning, but they were gone. With trembling, the driver said that his friend had found something shocking, the guys with Lolo were sent there by helicopter, Lolo was already exhausted while they were looking for them for two whole days. Lolo found two dead bodies, there was no heartbeat, only faces contorted in horror, Lin Xiu, in response to this, reassured the driver, saying that he could stand up for himself. The driver did not understand what was wrong with the boy, he wanted to influence him, saying that he was acting at his own peril and risk. They arrived at the scene and the driver warned that if something suspicious appeared, the guy should run, Lin Xiu only thanked him and advised him to return quickly. After these words, he followed into the depths of the forest, Wang Yong stood on a tree branch and reported to a certain Zhang that the guy was there. Senior Zhang told him to take care of his nephew, according to him, he is the only heir of the Zhang family and Wang Yong should do whatever he wants. Wang Yong insisted that this child did not bother him at all, Senior Zhang didn't want to be disappointed and Wang Yun had to make sure everything went smoothly, Wang Yong said that they brought Lin Xiu to the Forbidden Zone in Binhai City, regardless of rank, he will die. If Wang Yong completed the task well, he was promised a favor, he was delighted by what he heard. Lin Xiu was running and suddenly stopped at the skull, taking it in his hands, he noticed the lack of Yuin energy. Lin Xiu knew that this was a ghost with the same level as him, 
only he could not bring out the energy of a ghostly cultivator at a purest level. Deciding that he needed to find him quickly, he ran further through the forest, he finally reached Zen Jinji. The first thing he did was release Zen Jinji's mouth, asking if he was okay, Zen Jinji, in turn, ordered Lin Xiao to leave, because there were ghosts hanging around everywhere. To begin with, Lin Xiao wanted to free him and then talk. Zen Jinji stood up and asked what Lin Xiao was waiting for and suggested getting out of there, because there were ghosts there. Lin Xiao ordered to stop joking and leave his friend's body alone. Zen Jinji was shocked by what he heard, but then, smiling maliciously, he praised Lin Xiao for being able to see him. Deciding that it was time for Lin Xiao to die, he rushed at him, Lin Xiao stopped the ghost rushing at him with one hand. Zen Jinji fell and a ghost appeared from him, who did not understand why the guy was doing this, Lin Xiao explained that he came to save his friends and did not want any disagreements between them. The ghost asked about salvation and wanted to see how Lin Xiao could handle it, after these words, the ghost began to summon many others. Lin Xiao was surprised to see so many military souls, looking at the castle, he asked about it. The ghosts did not fall for this and asked if Lin Xiao was afraid of them, they pointed to who they became after they stood up to defend their homeland, according to them, the foreign devil said that there was something good there, that's why they were there, but they were just deceived, they traded their own comrades for gold. Lin Xiao understood what was happening, but did not consider this a reason to injure innocent people, he wondered what they were trying to achieve with this, because in his opinion it was better for them to reincarnate. The ghosts talked about their attempts, which were unsuccessful, something was holding them back there, this was quite unusual for Lin Xiao, wondering what the problem was in their opinion. The ghosts assumed it was because of the castle, they can't get in there, maybe there must be something important there. Lin Xiao asked if they were trying to enter, the ghosts confirmed this, that they tried to enter to see if anyone was there, but some force blocked them. The boy offered to check the castle for them, he wanted to see what kind of power it was. The ghosts wanted to see if they could trust him, according to Lin Xiao, they no longer have a choice but to believe. When leaving, he asked to take care of his friend and not to be a fool, since they already felt how strong he was, Lin Xiao stated that he is not an ordinary person. Lin Xiao moved straight to the castle and began to open the large gate. He opened the gate with difficulty, as there was a strong wind and cold. Lin Xiao approached a certain monument and noticed that the closer he got, the colder it became, in his opinion, there is definitely something there. After that, he turned into fire and used the power buried in the darkness of the ice flame soul and released the power towards some spirit. This little spirit began to ask not to kill him, Lin Xiao was surprised that he could talk, it was unusual. The spirit thought that Lin Xiao was scared and ordered him to hurry up and free him, otherwise, he promised to kill him at that very moment. Lin Xiao did not hesitate and struck this spirit, the spirit was angry, saying that if the deity had full power, he would already be dead. Lin Xiao did not believe that he was a deity and offered to give it his all, the spirit became more angry than before, in his opinion, he doesn't look like he believes in him, she said that she used to be a big shot. Lin Xiao began to fry this spirit with his flames, the spirit begged to stop and asked not to kill him. He recalled the words of the spirit that she could kill him in an instant, and now he wanted to see her strength. The spirit was in more pain and she continued to ask to stop, Lin Xiao had no intention of letting go and leaving behind a potential time bomb. The spirit was in great pain and she offered to negotiate, if he left her alive, she promised to be very useful to Lin Xiao. The spirit admitted that it is not even the soul of the ice flame, but is actually something else, she asked to believe her, because no soul can talk. Lin Xiao didn't believe it because it looked, felt, and worked just like an ice flame soul, if this is not so, then what is it, he wondered. The spirit assured that she had no evil intentions towards him, Lin Xiao noticed that with her IQ she could not tell him anything meaningful and refused. The spirit was already trembling from pain while in the flames, she was willing to recognize Lin Xiao as her master for the rest of her life, unless she died, then Lin Xiao would not have to worry about her betrayal. Lin Xiao agreed to conclude the contract, the contract with the familiar sounded like this, the contract is bound using a spell, once concluded, the life and death of the minion is entirely up to the master, in order for the contract to be concluded, both parties must agree to it. After this, a seal was placed on the spirit, she considered it humiliating, in case someone saw her powerful, 
working for the brat, in that case, she thought it best to commit suicide before anyone found out about it. Lin Xiao left and beckoned her to come with him, the spirit decided that her life was much more important than the shame and went with him, she suggested that they go for reconnaissance while Lin Xiao could take a good look at the building, if anyone touched him, she promised to give them a lesson, asking permission to grind them into powder. And Lin Xiao noticed that she was too cheerful for someone who almost died at the hands of her boss, also asking what he should call her, suggesting ice, the spirit stated that Lin Xiao is so kind and he can call her whatever he wants. Going outside, Lin Xiao did not understand why the ghosts were standing near the building, the ghosts saluted and thanked him. Having said goodbye, they promised not to forget him and disappeared into the air. Later that night, Lin Xiao dragged Zhen Jinji home and put him on the bed, and now Lin Xiao turned to the guys who stand in his way for the third time, for this they will not have any mercy. Later, sitting on the sofa in silence, Lin Xiao became interested in the piece of ice, namely, to her words that she is not just the soul of the icy flame, wanting to clarify better, icy tried to explain, but replied that it was difficult, suggesting that he forget it. In response, Lin Xiao wondered why he left her, ice immediately began to tell him that he could reveal the remaining holy lights for him, she asked to leave her, as she could lead him to them. Lin Xiao believed that other holy lights would not interfere with him, because he was a cultivator of the elements of fire and thunder, turning to her, he asked if she still had this ability, ordering her not to lie to him. Ice Flow confirmed this, also talking about many other abilities, she can easily detect holy lights within a 100 mile radius, Lin Xiao thought it was pretty good. At this moment, there was a knock on the door and notified Lin Xiao that the auction was about to begin. Lin Xiao wondered if Jiang would be at the auction, they explained to him that if he wanted to get rights to own land, he would definitely show up there. He was happy with this as he had to repay him for something. Next is the auction site, the reporters reported that today they would have a special auction, many celebrities and industry giants will be attending their auction. They saw the famous translator Lu Xinhui and were suddenly surprised by what they saw, they noticed Ray and the provincial capital of the White family with Bai Mengzhi. Lin Xiao and the man with him also noticed Miss Bai and the person behind her who was a cultivator. The man didn't really know who they were and advised Lin Xiao not to stand out too much, since they didn't need unnecessary problems. At that moment a limousine pulled up, Wang Yong and Jiang Zhong came out from there. The reporter saw them and was about to escort them out, Jiang Zhong gave her money and invited her with him. Suddenly, Wang Yong noticed Lin Xiao and was shocked because he had not died, Jiang Zhong asked about what happened but he was assured that this time a certain person had been invited to defeat Lin Xiao. Jiang Zhong wondered who it was, Wang Yong knew that this person was already here, he rushed towards Lin Xiao, but he repelled the attack with one wave of his hand to pieces. The man asked about what happened, Lin Xiao said that this was a rank 5 devilish cultivator, calling him a small bunny who did not know his place. Lin Xiao was called quickly to the auction site so that he could explain it later. He Chenghui, rank 5 devil cultivator was dissatisfied with the way Lin Xiao called him. Wang Yong approached He Chenghui and asked if he could deal with Lin Xiao, he was confident in him, but before he could finish speaking, he was answered negatively. Wang Yun didn't understand what this meant, because he was a rank 5 rising cultivator. He Chenghui was angry with Wang Yong because he was not told earlier that Lin Xiao was not rank 6, in fact, even He Chenghui himself could not guess his rank but it seemed that they were equal in strength. Wang Yong couldn't believe it, because someone so young was already rank 5, He Chenghui said that he would do his best anyway. He, Wang Yong reminded him that he was a professional assassin and if he dealt with Lin Xiao, they would generously reward him with whatever they wanted. At this time, Lin Xiao was sitting and wondering whether the guy behind him was a member of the Taoist alliance and whether the devilish cultivator was working for them. The man noticed that Lin Xiao was thinking and asked about it, Lin Xiao reassured him in response. At the auction site, Mr. Lu was called out by a guy who asked him to sit closer. Lin Xiao wondered about this, Mr. Lu explained that this was Zheng Jian, a pawn of the Fuqiang group, he was there to disgrace him, while working for them and keeping a small company with him, he asked Mr. Lu to sit next to him. Zheng Jian found it disrespectful that he was considered a waste of space, a guard sat down next to him and asked if it was Lu Zhong, to which he was confirmed. 
Ironhead mercenary Lu was surprised because Mr. Lu did not look rich, he didn't even have a bodyguard with him. Looking back, Zheng Jian stood up, and now that the Iron Head mentioned it, Mr. Lu really does not have a guard. Lin Xiao and Mr. Lu stood aside, Lin Xiao noticed that Zheng Jian was approaching them and hit him first. Zheng Jian was shocked by this, Mr. Lu was ashamed that Zheng Jian couldn't act normally for a moment. Zheng Jian became even more angry because Lu Zhong thought that he could mock him so easily, it was obvious to him that Lin Xiao did this on purpose. Paying attention to the people sitting next to him, Lu Zhong noticed that Zheng Jian was brave only because he had support, Lu Zhong didn't believe that Zheng Jian seriously thought that he wouldn't dare to go against him if Zhang Fugui was here. At this moment, Jiang Zhong came and was pleased with this statement from Mr. Lu, he didn't mind what people would say about him. According to him, he needs to listen to everyone in a given situation, all points of view. Turning to Zheng Jian, Lin Xiao wondered if he had senility. Zheng Jian was angry because everyone saw his bad attitude and grabbed Lin Xiao and ordered him to answer him. Lin Xiao didn't think twice and hit Zheng Jian's head on the floor. Jiang Zhong, in turn, advised Mr. Lu to monitor his people, since in his opinion, Lin Xiao was already going too far. Mr. Lu explained that this is his dear friend, and Jiang Zhong's people are looking for problems for themselves, calling his people dogs, he suggested that they be properly trained. Zheng Jian didn't care who Lin Xiao was, he just wanted him to get out of there. Mr. Lu responded by telling Zheng Jian to leave, Lin Xiao apologized because he should not have teased the small dogs. Zheng Jian became angrier than ever and beckoned his guard, the Iron Head. The Iron Head approached Lin Xiao and was much larger than him, Zheng Jian assumed that Lin Xiao was scared and offered to apologize on his knees, in which case they promised to spare him. Lin Xiao was not afraid and offered to kneel down and apologize, and maybe he would forgive him for his behavior. Zheng Jian ordered the Iron Head to teach Lin Xiao a lesson by hitting him well and not sparing him. The Iron Head tried to grab Lin Xiao, but suddenly words were heard that Zheng Jian was using a mercenary to abuse the child. Turning their heads, they saw Miss White, Miss White ordered not to make a scene here and to let the child go, it was disgusting for her that he was dumping his own guilt on a simple boy. Zheng Jian immediately agreed, doing it exclusively for her, he promised to let Lin Xiao go today but so that he would not appear before his eyes again. Zheng Jian was leaving and suddenly slipped, Lin Xiao mocked him, asking why he was so clumsy. Standing up, Zheng Jian apologized to Miss Bai, as he decided that he could not fulfill her wish, he needed to teach this boy some manners. Miss Bai agreed and Zheng Jian ordered his guard to knock the boy down. People who watched this from the side believed that there was no need to get involved with Zheng Jian, because things were bad with him. Ironhead slowly approached Lin Xiao and tried to kick him, Lin Xiao caught his leg with two fingers. The guard wondered about such power and who the boy was, Lin Xiao considered this a great loss, because he had such a good leg, and after these words, he broke his leg with one blow. Zheng Jian was dissatisfied that this was the entire strength of the head of the mercenaries, people watching this also could not believe that the boy could break his leg, suggesting that the iron head was not who he said he was. Miss Bai approached Ray, asking if he was really a fake, Ray couldn't say for sure whether he was the leader among the mercenaries, but it was obvious that an ordinary guy couldn't break his leg. Miss Bai wondered if Uncle could easily defeat the Iron Head, Ray confirmed this, saying that he could do it faster than this guy. Lin Xiao suddenly turned towards Zheng Jian and he noticed it, the boy made a jerk and was already near him. He took him by the collar and lifted him off the ground, Zheng Jian did not understand what Lin Xiao was doing and offered to pay him to let him go. Lin Xiao did not agree and hit his leg, thereby breaking it. Zheng Jian crawled towards Jiang Zhong, begging him to save him, Wang Yong warned Jiang Zhong, saying that this was not the place for a showdown and suggested simply turning a blind eye to it. Jiang Zhong only ordered to send him to the hospital, Lu Zhong considered him generous and called him to sit with them. Jiang Zhong passed by them and advised them to keep their eyes open, in response Lu Zhong advised the same. The auction began and the man, Xiao Gang, welcomed everyone to the prestigious auction. As he removed the cloth, he unveiled their first product, a 200-year-old red dragon vessel, bid started at $30 million. Lu Zhong made the first bet of $35 million, Jiang Zhong knew from rumors that Lu Zhong had earned a lot of money by selling antiques, 
but today he believed that he would lose. After his thoughts, he offered a price of 40 million, Lu Zhong did not wait and offered a bet in response. The price reached 60 million, Wang Yong asked Jiang Zhong if he needed money for the land. Jiang Zhong explained his desire to ruin Lu Zhong by letting him raise the bet one last time. Lu Zhong also noticed this and decided to give the last bet to Jiang Zhong, Xiao Gang congratulated director Jia for retrieving the treasure. Their next item was in a golden luxury box, the people there did not know that they were in the box, like the presenter himself. He was preparing them for a product demonstration and tried to break this box, it didn't work out for him, due to the obscurity of the item, the opening bid was $1 million. The piece of ice turned to Lin Xiu, saying that she felt something useful inside, I advise you to get her. Lin Xiu wondered what was inside the box, the piece of ice also had no idea, but convinced of its value. Lin Xiu didn't have that much money and didn't know how to bet on it, Lu Zhong noticed Lin Xiu's interest in this box and asked about the need. The boy asked to borrow some money, promising to return everything, Lu Zhong stated that this was a gift for him and made a bet of 1, 5 million. Wang Yong was perplexed and asked about Jiang Zhong's further actions, because Lu Zhong had his eye on this product. Jiang Zhong did not like Wang Yong's proposal and ordered him to leave him alone. No one began to outbid Lu Zhong, from now on the goods belonged to him. Ray mocked Lu Zhong, because this is an ordinary box and after this Lu Zhong dares to call himself a professional in antiques. Miss Bai advised them to just leave him alone, since 1, 5 million means nothing to him and it doesn't concern them. Lin Xiu thanked Lu Zhong for the service rendered, according to Lu Zhong, it was not difficult for him because Lin Xiu devotes his time to saving his son, he pledged to repay his debt throughout his life. Lin Xiu assured that there was nothing to worry about, no matter what happened, he would protect. Next, Xiao Gang presented their next product, which is one of the most key in their auction, the treasure of their city. Jiang Zhong rejoiced over people's ignorance that this piece of land was excellent for future cultivation, he was going to have it. Xiao Gang announced an opening bid of $500 million, Jiang Zhong began to ask Wang Yong about the remaining amount of money, the amount was approximately $1, 3 billion. Hearing this, he immediately bet $1 billion, Xiao Gang accepted this bet and challenged someone else to raise the bet, because he had just started. Lu Zhong offered $1, 1 billion, Jiang Zhong was not going to stop and raise the bet to $1, 2 billion. Lu Zhong understood that if he continued in the same spirit, he would lose all his money. Unexpectedly, a bid of $2 billion was announced, it came from Miss Bai. Xiao Gang was uncomfortable with such a bet and nervously asked those who wanted to raise it. Ray wanted to make sure from Miss Bai whether it was worth it to thoughtlessly buy this piece of land. Miss Bai assured that this was a very good thing and she would not lose anything. Jiang Zhong was shocked by this action and wondered if Miss Bai had learned the secret and realized the full value of this land. Xiao Gang was counting the bet, and Jiang Zhong was angry, because if it weren't for Lu Zhong, who had tricked him, he would now be able to raise the bet. Now the $2 million bid was closed and Miss Bai was the owner of the land. Jiang Zhong looked angrily at Lu Zhong and Lin Xiu and they noticed it. Jiang Zhong was about to leave and Lin Xiu also advised Lu Zhong to leave because it was time to return the recent grievances to someone. Miss Bai noticed that Lin Xiu was leaving and asked Ray to find out about him, suggesting that there was something wrong with him. Ray assured that Lin Xiu had some hidden power, according to him, even if he were hired by the White family, he was not sure that he would be able to train Lin Xiu, talent seemed incomprehensible to him. Miss Bai asked about the words that Lin Xiu could be better than Ray because she didn't believe it. Ray explained that there are a huge number of people in this world who are superior to him, but advised against making such harsh conclusions, because he can't analyze Lin Xiu until he sees his real abilities. Miss Bai stood up and was about to leave, she needed to explain to her father about the $2 million spent. In the hotel parking lot at this time, Lin Xiu and Lu Zhong met Jiang Zhong with Wang Yong. Jiang Zhong believed that Lu Zhong deliberately made him lose that bet and promised to repay him for it. Lu Zhong realized that they were looking for a scapegoat, and agreed to be one, asking if they were ready. Jiang Zhong only reminded him of what had happened to his son and ordered Lu Zhong to be beaten. Suddenly, Lin Xiu turned to Wang Yun, considering him a small rabbit for himself, suggesting that they decide to make them here or somewhere else. Wang Yong, after thinking for a while, invited him along, 
it was funny to him that the boy was mocking him, promising to make him take back his words. Lin Xiao was surprised that Wang Yong was just leaving, Lu Zhong reported that he had not seen that assassin, but Lin Xiao knew about it. After Lin Xiao left after Wang Yong, Jiang Zhong taunted Lu Zhong that he was counting on the boy. Arriving at a certain place that was completely planted with trees, Lin Xiao advised not to play with him, as this was a good place for an ambush. Wang Yong noticed that at Lin Xiao's age, it was not easy to cultivate, they gave him a chance, but since he missed it, he will have to pay for going with Mr. Lu Zhong against them. After these words, Lin Xiao should have died, but he only apologized because he does not play with prey. Leaves rustled behind him and the assassin appeared with a dagger behind his back. Lin Xiao noticed this with his keen vision and stopped the sword a few centimeters before his eye. He was glad that the rabbit showed up on its own and he didn't even have to look for it, the killer was shocked by the boy's strength. Lin Xiao notified the piece of ice that it was her turn and asked him to show him something worthwhile, as he would borrow her power. Suddenly, Lin Xiao's hand was engulfed in blue flames, the killer burned out and realized that this was a spontaneous release. Wang Yong watched this from the side and couldn't believe it, this was not in his plans, but he was convinced that the boy was stronger than all of them. The killer knelt down and began to apologize to the young master, he talked about the payment for this task and ignorance, about his status, in case he had to take his life, the killer was ready. Wang Yong did not wait and started running, Lin Xiao noticed this and ordered the piece of ice to kill him. Wang Yong was running away, but a piece of ice managed to catch up with him and envelop him in flames, from which he burned to death and instantly fell away. The killer was horrified by what he saw, Lin Xiao admitted that he knew that the killer had no evil intentions, because it was just his job to survive, according to him, the killer must accept his conditions if he wants to live. The killer was ready for anything and was given an order, to kill Jiang Zhong, just for this, he will already be useful to Lin Xiao. The task was accepted, and Lin Xiao returned to Mr. Lu, Lu Zhong immediately began asking if Lin Xiao was okay. Lin Xiao confirmed that Wang Yong was finished, Jiang Zhong heard this and was dissatisfied. Lin Xiao suggested that Mr. Lu should leave from there, they got into the limousine and drove off, Lu Zhong was interested in the further fate of Jiang Zhong. Lin Xiao assured that the little rabbit would deal with him and there was no need to worry. Jiang Zhong couldn't believe that the king was dead, because he was just a simple child. The killer snuck up behind him and he noticed it, he immediately began asking questions about how the boy was alive, since they had paid him to eliminate him. Jiang Zhong threatened his uncle, the deacon of the Taoist League, that when he found out about this, the killer would regret it. The killer lit a cigarette and asked about the deacon, as he left, he wished him good luck with Lin Xiao, and Jiang Zhong had already been killed. Next, at a certain party, Xiao Teng saw someone among the crowd. She saw her friend Lily and wondered why she goes there, because everything there is expensive. Wu Lily, Xiao Teng's classmate, asked her not to worry about it, because girls like her get it for free. Some guy sitting on the sofa called Lily to him. At this moment, Lu Zhong's car arrived at this building, he asked Lin Xiao if he knew that this was a rather expensive establishment. Lin Xiao reported that he had arrived at the meeting place of Xiao Teng in messages, in response to Lu Zhong, he recalled the recent million dollars, believing that this would be enough. Lu Zhong explained this as simple gratitude for treating Xiao Kong, and today, when he helped him deal with Jiang Zhong and solve long-standing problems, he offered to add another five million dollars. Lin Xiao thanked Lu Zhong and urged him to contact him if he needed help. Lu Zhong left and Xiao Teng immediately came to Lin Xiao to meet him, they went up together to the room where Wu Lili and her boyfriend were. She introduced herself to Lin Xiao as Xiao Teng's classmate and he introduced himself to her in return. Turning her gaze to her boyfriend, she announced him as Dr. Cheng's student, Xian Yang, he wondered what Lin Xiao was doing, calling him Xiao Teng's boyfriend. Lin Xiao only replied that he is a freelancer, but there is no work yet, Lily didn't know who a freelancer was, and Xian Yang turned to Lily, reminding him of his words about the first impression, he assumed that brother Lin might have strong support behind him and asked her to forgive her for this. Lin Xiao said that he himself was an orphan and had no support, and freelancing meant being free, doing what he wanted, when he wanted. Lily addressed Xiao Tang, reproaching her for abandoning Cheng Zheng Fei and Yang Fei for the sake of an orphan without support, 
Xiao Tang wanted to explain, but Lily asked not to interrupt her. She explained that they, girls, must find someone worthy, someone with power and high status, and if not them, then at least a rich person. At this moment, the door suddenly opened and Yang Fei walked in, wondering what they were doing there. He noticed Lin Xiao next to Xiao Tang and was perplexed. Yang Fei was informed that this was Xiao Tang's boyfriend and he was overcome with anger, putting his foot on the table, he told Lin Xiao to answer whether he was Xiao Tang's boyfriend. Lin Xiao only boldly replied that this was not Yang Fei's business, Yang Fei did not believe this, because he wants to become her boyfriend and ordered Lin Xiao to get lost, otherwise she would have to deal with him. Xian Yang appeared between them, who reassured Yang Fei and hinted to him that he was disgracing himself in front of Xiao Tang. Yang Fei glanced at his assistant, who obliged to go and prepare everything, Lin Xiao watched this from the side and did not understand anything. Sitting on the sofa, Yang Fei stated that they had some rules there and asked if Lin Xiao had heard anything about them. Lin Xiao did not hear anything about this, and Yang Fei smiled sarcastically and ordered something to be brought in. After these words, they brought a huge amount of alcohol, Yang Fei, taking the bottle in his hands, urged Lin Xiao to drink, because whoever wins will win. Xiao Tang was unhappy with this arrangement, since she did not intend to be his girlfriend, Yang Fei told her not to interfere in the affairs of men. Lin Xiao believed that he did not have to do this, but Yang Fei was too stupid in his opinion, going to play with him. Yang Fei continued drinking and saw that Lin Xiao had not even started, he began to reproach him for being afraid, but Lin Xiao decided not to waste time, but to use the plates. Wu Lili was shocked that he dared to challenge Yang Fei to a drinking competition, meanwhile, the plates were completely filled and they began to drink. Lin Xiao easily drank it all to the end, but Yang Fei could not, Lin Xiao called him a weakling, because he only knows how to yank and nothing else. Such words hurt Yang Fei and he said that he was still able to drink it, in that case, Lin Xiao asked him to continue. Looking at the plate and seeing his reflection, Yang Fei felt sick, a guy immediately ran up to him and asked how he was feeling. Xian Yang asked Wu Lili if she still thought that this boy was just an orphan and advised him not to judge a book by its cover. Yang Fei was dissatisfied with this outcome of events and promised Lin Xiao that he would not get away so easily, after which he grabbed him. Lin Xiao ordered to remove his hands, since he had already lost and buried Yang Fei's face in the table. Yang Fei's assistant was nervous and asked what the boy was doing, Lin Xiao calmed down Xiao Tang and he let go of Yang Fei's hand. Xian Yang said that he did not expect something so stupid, admitting that her classmate was not a mistake, he wondered where she found Lin Xiao, Wu Lili asked him to be quiet so that Xiao Tang could hear him. According to Xian Yang, he doesn't want anyone to get hurt, because he is a doctor. Getting up from the sofa, he asked everyone to calm down, because this was a simple misunderstanding. Wu Lili turned to Xiao Tang and noticed that her boyfriend was capable, Xiao Tang was proud of Lin Xiao. While they were chatting, Yang Fei watched Lin Xiao angrily and promised to punish him soon, at this moment, Wu Lili invited Xiao Teng to go with her to the restroom. Xian Yang and Lin Xiao were left alone on the sofa, Xian Yang sat closer to him and offered advice, saying that Yang Fei was a complete problem, he had strong support. Lin Xiao thanked him for the advice, but stated that he was capable of taking care of himself, Xian Yang took this as rudeness, because he was trying to be friendly. On the way to the restroom, a girl ran past Xiao Tang and Wu Lili in a hurry. By accident, Wu Lili touched the vase with her hand and dropped it, it subsequently broke into small pieces. They were very worried and Wu Lili saw that she accidentally broke something valuable. Looking up, they saw Wu Xiao Long and two other guys standing in front of them, they immediately began to apologize. The guys said that their boss took this vase for $200,000, the girls were shocked by what they heard. At this time, Xian Yang was proving to Lin Xiao that Yang Fei would definitely take revenge on him. The door opened and the guys walked in with Wu Lili and Xiao Tang, Yang Fei turned to Xiao Long, wondering if there was any problem. Taking a look at Yang Fei, he was ordered to leave now, Xian Yang did not understand what was happening and asked to let his girlfriend go. He was told that she owed Xiao Long $200,000 for breaking an antique vase in his store and ordered her to pay. Xian Yang was confused at this price, Wu Lili trembled with fear and asked Xian Yang to save her, 
Xiao Long ordered to give him the money, otherwise he would tear off the girl's hands. But if Xiao Teng pleases him, he will only allow them to pay back $100,000, Xian Yang was going to give $100,000. Taking Xiao Teng by the hair, she was asked if there was anyone who would pay for her, unexpectedly, this guy screamed in pain because Lin Xiao twisted his arm, he offered to take $200,000 until he got angry. After that, Xiao Ting took it and was about to leave, Xiao Long called out to him. Xiao Long noticed that his bodyguard was injured and ordered him to pay $200,000 immediately. Xiao Long said that he had changed his mind and they would all pay for the bodyguard's medical bills, the vase and the psychological shock, according to him, he did not mention the vase recognition fee and other additional fees, they had to pay one, two million dollars, and if they refused, they should not even think about leaving this place. Everyone was shocked by what they heard, Xian Yang was also unhappy that everything had gone bad and did not know what to do, Wu Lili approached him and asked him to come up with something. Yang Fei wanted to check with Xiao Long if this concerned him, Xiao Long didn't know who he was and Yang Fei introduced himself as coming to pay tribute to him when he came to have a drink. Xiao Long agreed and said that he could pay 50,000, after which he could go. Xiao Teng and Wu Lili were unhappy that he only thought about himself, Yang Fei stated that he did not do anything wrong, but they broke the vase. Lin Xiao intervened and ordered to provide evidence where medical bills and everything else exceeded a million. The guys were angry with him and one of them decided to hit him with a machete, Lin Xiao did not want to do this until the last moment, but after a while one of the bodyguards ended up in the wall. Everyone was shocked by what they saw, and Xiao Long ordered people to deal with Lin Xiao. Lin Xiao was too agile for them and approached Xiao Long and declared that it was his turn, since there was no one else left to play with. After saying these words, he punched Xiao Long in the face. People immediately rushed to help Xiao Long and asked him to call for help quickly. Standing up, Xiao Long was angry that they dared to hit him and ordered to kill Lin Xiao right away. The guys began to approach Lin Xiao and take out knives, Wu Lili noticed this and told Xian Yan about it, but he stood behind her and was shaking with fear. Yang Fei watched this from the side and couldn't believe that people intended to kill them when he saw the knives. Lin Xiao liked this and began to defend himself, after knocking the knife out of the hands of one bodyguard, he threw it at the wall next to Xiao Long. Wu Lili was delighted that Lin Xiao won, Xian Yang asked to keep it a secret that he had a phobia of knives, so he did not become a surgeon, he really thought Lin Xiao's work was good. Lily thought that Xian Yang was shaking to the side in fear, Xian Yang advised them to go, since Tama was not safe and people might return. Xian Yang noticed that something was wrong with Lily and tried to touch her, she knocked his hand away and suggested breaking up. Xian Yang tried to explain himself, but she said she was now convinced that he would not hesitate to leave her if she were attacked. Xian Yang didn't know what to say and wanted to stop her, Lily was leaving and wanted to leave. She caught up with Lin Xiao and Xiao Tang who were leaving, Xian Yang was left alone and depressed. When leaving the building, the girls working there invited them back, Xiao Tang wondered if he was heading to the capital. Lin Xiao said that he had to visit his grandfather, when they reached the capital, he was going to meet him first, Xiao Tang wanted to go with him. When she reached her house, she and Xiao Tang said goodbye, with thoughts that he needed to find Wang Yang in the capital, he approached the pedestrian crossing. A car suddenly rushed in front of him and he noticed Miss Bai in it, realizing that she was in trouble, he began to hail a taxi. Getting into the car, he ordered to chase that car, the driver was not himself and asked many different questions before driving. They were driving quite fast, Lin Xiao wondered if the driver was afraid of losing points, since they had already passed five or six traffic lights. The driver asked if he could be penalized for points by helping the police, Lin Xiao tried to explain himself, but the driver understood that he supposedly needed to hide the identity of the policeman because of a secret mission. Being in some wilderness, the people who kidnapped Miss Bai decided to open her mouth, freeing her mouth, Miss Bai screamed because she did not understand the reason why she was taken hostage. People noticed that Miss Bai was beautiful and they were going to have fun with her before killing her. Miss Bai really didn't like being pestered and warned her to let her go, otherwise it wouldn't end well. One of the guys knew that the White family was really powerful and they were prepared for the consequences. Suddenly the door was knocked down, the guys turned around and were surprised by what was happening. Miss Bai realized that it was Lin Xiao, 
Lin Xiao apologized to the little rabbits, asking if he was in the way. The guys didn't like how they were called and one of them ordered to seize Lin Xiao. One of the trio began to attack Lin Xiao, but he skillfully dodged, crouching down, he threw a kick to the stomach. The guys were shocked by what they saw, Lin Xiao quickly got behind them and pushed their heads together. Miss Bai didn't understand why Lin Xiao was so strong, perhaps even stronger than Uncle Ray, abruptly renouncing such thoughts, she stopped thinking about such things. Lin Xiao helped Miss Bai free herself, in response, she thanked him. Lin Xiao saw that her clothes were torn and handed over his jacket, he wondered who these people were that kidnapped her. Standing in front of one of the kidnappers, she began asking questions and promised to throw them down if they didn't tell. The man was shaking with fear and challenged her to do it, since they wouldn't tell anyway. Next, Lin Xiao held one guy from the window, the guy begged not to leave him, Lin Xiao ordered to tell who sent him if he did not want to die. The guy admitted that it was Su Ganzi, the person who sent them to deal with Miss Bai. After a while, Lin Xiao and Miss Bai left, she wondered if Lin Xiao would care if she was killed by Xiao Ganzi. Lin Xiao at first did not understand that this question related to him and replied that Xiao Ganzi had his eye on her, not him, therefore, he should not worry about this and it does not concern him in any way. In that case, Miss Bai wondered why he would risk his life, but Lin Xiao didn't even consider these guys to be a danger. Miss Bai thought that there must be a reason anyway, Lin Xiao asked not to overthink things and consider that he had returned the favor. Miss Bai asked about the debt, and Lin Xiao asked about help at the auction, she understood that if she had not done that insignificant action at the auction, he would not have saved her. Lin Xiao confirmed this, which made her shocked, Lin Xiao was leaving, and she caught up with him, offering to treat him to dinner. Further into the hotel, Lin Xiao walked into his room, behind him was Miss Bai, who asked various questions. Lin Xiao said that he lives there because the orphanage where he used to live was destroyed. Miss Bai said that she could help him buy a new house, Lin Xiao refused this because he was heading to the capital tomorrow. Miss Bai was happy because her family lived there. Lin Xiao turned around and wanted to dare to say something, pinning her against the wall, he asked if she was afraid that he would do something to her. Miss Bai admitted that she had lost her phone, without letting her finish, Lin Xiao offered his phone number, but she still didn't remember the number. Lin Xiao clarified whether she wanted to stay with him, Miss Bai did not mind and asked Lin Xiao about it. Lin Xiao, in turn, refused, admitting that he was not interested in her at all, she was perplexed by what she heard. Lin Xiao asked to forget about it, saying that he would contact her people, after sharing his location with President Liu, he asked to also contact the White family. Miss Bai asked Lin Xiao if she could take a bath, and then went to the bathroom. When leaving, she also asked to bring her some clothes. After a while, Miss Bai came out of the shower and saw a pile of clothes, she clarified whether it was for her. Lin Xiao explained that he bought it at the hotel, at that moment he noticed that someone was coming. The door opened and it was a certain man. He was surprised by what he saw and immediately began to find out what Lin Xiao did to Miss Bai. The man was about to attack Lin Xiao when Uncle Ray appeared from behind, Lin Xiao began to fight with the man. To the side, Uncle Ray assured Miss Bai that she needed to be behind since Lin Xiao was strong, she said that Lin Xiao saved her. Uncle Ray apologized to Lin Xiao, he praised him for being so young but already so strong, Lin Xiao also praised Uncle Ray. Uncle Ray liked Lin Xiao more and more, he thanked him again for saving Miss Bai and offered to join the Bai family. Lin Xiao thanked him for such an offer, but stated that he was used to being alone. Miss Bai changed her clothes and was about to leave, she asked Lin Xiao to remember to visit her when he arrived in the capital. Further in the car, Miss Bai ordered to find Xiao Ganzi and take revenge on him ten times stronger, because he was the one who planned her kidnapping, she was glad that everything worked out this time thanks to Lin Xiao, but she still wanted to check his background. Uncle Ray wondered if she wanted to recruit him, according to her, Lin Xiao is so arrogant that it is impossible to subjugate him, but he can be made friends. Further in the suburbs of Hai province, Jiang Daohong Taoist deacon fled and reported the terrible incident. He was informed that it is not yet clear, but traces of devilish qi were found in his nephew's body and they suspect that this is the work of a devilish sect. Jiang Daohong was surprised that the devilish Haishio sect wanted to turn everything upside down, that even his nephew dared to twitch, he ordered his orders to be conveyed to all his disciples that while he was alive, 
they were to eradicate all the devilish cultivator sects on this earth. The world of Tao could be divided into five forces, north, south, west, east, center, Hai province is under the control of the southern capital. Jiang Daohong is one of the four deacons in Hai province, Jiang Daohong ordered the destruction of the devilish sects, so Hai province was in chaos. However, Lin Xiu doesn't even know about it. Standing at the provincial railway station were San Zengu and Wang Wan, Wang Wan was unhappy that a bunch of poor relatives would come to them and she did not want to let them into the house, because she did not know what troubles they would bring them from that village. San Zengu explained that if his cousin had not helped his father, he would have died of hunger, Wang Wan believed that they were just looking for profit. San Zengu noticed that Lin Xiao and Xiao Teng came out, he immediately asked if she was his niece, Xiao Teng responded by asking if he was Uncle Zhang. Lin Xiao introduced himself as her brother from the orphanage and they also grew up together, Wang Wan heard this and was unhappy, because San Zengu was talking about only one girl, she promised not to let him in, since their house was not a public access area. San Zengu didn't understand why she couldn't keep quiet, since they would be staying with them for two days, Wang Wan didn't like the way he was acting and asked if it weren't for her father's sake, would he be here today? She was leaving and wanted to see how he would take care of them, ordering not to even bring them home. San Zengu asked them not to pay attention to his wife, according to him, she is not feeling well today, first, he wanted to go out to eat and then take him to his home. Xiao Ting said that if this is a problem for Uncle Zhang, then they can stay at the hotel, Lin Xiao also confirmed this. San Zengu explained that these were just a small problem and they shouldn't worry, if he cannot let them into his home, then in the future he will not even be able to look their grandfather in the eyes. Xiao Teng and Lin Xiao agreed and San Zengu invited them to his car, which was nearby. At lunch, San Zeng told Lin Xiao that it was not worth buying anything, Xiao Teng replied that everything was fine and it was just a housewarming gift, because they had not been there for a long time. Entering the apartment, San Zengu thought that there was no one, but he saw a large number of people, he felt uncomfortable because absolutely everything was there. Wang Wan was wondering how they would enter the house now, because in addition to this, there were two guys standing next to her. San Zengu could not understand why she was doing this, because just children came to them, they came from afar and wanted to stay only for two days. A certain girl told him to shut up and not argue with her sister, according to her, Lin Xiao and Xiao Teng are not their children, but only orphans, due to the fact that they had their own rules and standards, she advised giving them money to spend the night somewhere else. Lin Xiao was shocked by these words, Xiao Teng noticed that Lin Xiao didn't like this and suggested that she just leave. In response, he asked to wait a minute, he stated that Uncle San is such a good person and it is sad that he married someone like Wang Wan, Lin Xiao clarified whether they needed money. Then he took out a bundle containing $10,000 and scattered it from the window, the children immediately ran to collect them from the floor. Wang Wan watched this and was dissatisfied with their behavior, Lin Xiao explained that they were not interested in their property and gave Uncle Zheng a small compensation from Xiao Teng and him, promising that they would not bother them anymore. San Zheng was very ashamed of this situation, but Xiao Teng assured that this was their gift and there was no need to be upset. After these words, they left and Wang Wan wanted to know how much money Lin Xiao gave them. San Zeng became convinced that she was shameless and was disappointed in her, he believed that after the way she treated Lin Xiao and Xiao Teng, she had no right to do so. Lin Xiao and Xiao Teng were walking down the street, Lin Xiao noticed that Xiao Teng seemed to see a ghost that time, but she only replied that her uncle should not have taken such a wife. Lin Xiao assured that everything is in the past and we need to stop thinking about trifles, since in the future they would have nothing in common with her anyway, but for now he suggested thinking about where to spend the night. Xiao Teng couldn't even imagine and asked Lin Xiao about hotels nearby, Lin Xiao decided to visit their girlfriend since it was still daylight. In some village, Lin Xiao asked Xiao Teng not to go far from him, they approached a certain red gate. The door was opened to them by Lin Xiao's grandfather, Hyun Zheng Yang, who greeted them out of politeness and could not understand who came to him. Lin Xiao reminded himself and said that they had come to visit him, hearing this, he was shocked that it was really Lin Xiao. Having looked at him better, he began to rejoice and pull Lin Xiao's cheeks, he invited them inside. After sitting down, Hyun Zhengyang wanted to get a better look at Lin Xiao, 
he realized that he looked exactly like his mother, grandfather asked for forgiveness for what happened to his mother, because if he had been a little more decisive and checked on her, he might have prevented this. Lin Xiu assured that he and his mother caused inconvenience to his grandfather, grandfather told him not to joke about it, because he and his mother were very dear to him, and according to him, his old bones are no longer capable of anything, after the incident with Lin Xiu's mother, he looked for him in Binhai, but did not find him, he wondered where Lin Xiu was back then. Lin Xiu said that he was looking for medical advice, which was saved by God's doctor, grandfather was glad that there were still good people on earth and also asked about his girlfriend. Lin Xiu introduced Xiao Tong to his grandfather as a sister because they grew up together in his mother's orphanage. Grandfather and Xiao Tong were pleased to meet you, grandfather was wondering if they would stay tonight and received a positive answer. Hyun Zhengyang was happy, but warned that he only had one empty room and offered to sleep here on the sofa. Lin Xiu reassured his grandfather that they could sleep there together with Xiao Tong, grandfather did not like these words and began to scold Lin Xiu. Lin Xiu clarified that it would be bad for grandfather's back to sleep on the sofa, he will sleep on the floor, because there will be nothing for him, and Xiao Tong will sleep on the bed, grandfather agreed to this. It was getting dark outside, and at this time Lin Xiu was preparing his sleeping place, Xiao Tong was worried. He noticed this and suggested that she go to the shower first, Xiao Tong decided to go first. After a while, the door opened and Xiao Tong came out sending Lin Xiu to the shower. Lin Xiu finished his business, but noticed that he forgot to take his underwear. Wrapping himself in a towel, he went to get his underwear. The next day, Lin Xiu, Xiao Tong and grandfather had breakfast together, grandfather asked about how Xiao Tong slept. Hearing a positive response, he was overjoyed and suggested that Lin Xiu go buy some clothes for Xiao Tong today to unwind a little. At Qiman Provincial Square, Xiao Tong tried on various outfits, after trying on one of them, she asked Lin Xiu what she looked like. Lin Xiu noticed that he looked gorgeous and was going to pay for this outfit. The seller informed me that it cost $888 and thanked me for purchasing from them, Xiao Tong heard the price and thought it was too expensive and didn't want to take it. Lin Xiu reassured her, because he is rich and can earn even more money in the future. Walking outside, Xiao Tong said that she seemed to see Wang Yang, Lin Xiu immediately rushed to look for him, Xiao Tong said that he was with some woman and was dressed in monastic clothes. Lin Xiu stopped believing in this and suggested going home to rest, but Xiao Tong saw that girl and pointed at her. Approaching her, Lin Xiu wanted to ask her something, she was angry because Lin Xiu thought that she was old, but Lin Xiu was interested in the monk who was with her. The girl said that as soon as they left the shopping center, he disappeared, now she herself is also looking for him, because she has already paid the first installment, which should satisfy her. Hearing this, Xiao Tong wondered where they should go now and asked Lin Xiu about it, Lin Xiu was pleased that Wang Yang was in the capital, because there are not many places here. Lin Xiu suggested returning since we had been shopping all morning, and then he would immediately think about how to find Wang Yang. While at home, Lin Xiu called Mr. Lu asking for help, he needed help finding someone in the capital. Mr. Lu explained that he had no influence in the capital, but he could ask the white family for a favor, according to him, in the capital the white family is quite influential and it's easy for them to find someone, Lin Xiu agreed and was ready for anything if an agreement could be reached. Mr. Lu called and said that the white family agreed, but on the condition that Lin Xiu would need to accompany someone on the trip. Lin Xiu was surprised that this was a part-time job as a bodyguard, Mr. Lu said that they could comb the place in a couple of days and was confident that Lin Xiu would manage it anyway. In the morning, the fourth son of the white family, Bai Yu, reported that Lu Zhong from Binhai wrote to him to introduce the master. Bai Wu was at a loss about what kind of master this was and what his conditions were, he was told that in areas remote from the capital, there would still be a couple of capable people, especially since Little Miss needed a bodyguard tonight, regarding the conditions, it was necessary to help find one person, Bai Yu said. Bai Wu believed that nothing should happen to their niece this evening, otherwise they would not be able to appear in front of their father, at that moment, Bai Mendi ran up to them and asked what they were talking about. Bai Wu said that they were talking about her trip to Jingling City, Bai Mendi had just come from a run and asked about leaving in the afternoon for the city of Jingling. Bai Yu confirmed this, but since everyone is still worried about her, 
they planned to send Uncle Ray with them. By Mendy didn't like the fact that they were making a big deal out of a mountain and taking Uncle Ray away from her sister, Bayou said that her sister was kidnapped a few days ago, so she needs to be careful in everything. By Mendy agreed and was going to listen to their advice, after which she left to get ready. The second half of the day has arrived, Bayou and Bai Wu escorted by Mendy to Uncle Ray's car, Bayou ordered to obey Uncle Ray, promising that he would definitely protect her. Bai Wu recalled that Mr. Lu sent one of his experts here and asked where he was, Bai Yu admitted that he forgot, but was not particularly eager to hire a stranger from Binhai, not knowing what level he was. They were just about to leave when Lin Xiu called out to them from behind, asking about the location of the Bai family's house. Bai Yu and Bai Wu were shocked, not understanding where Mr. Lu got it from, because it was a child. Bai Wu got angry and told Bai Yu to figure it out himself, Lin Xiu apologized for being late. Bai Yu asked him to answer honestly whether Lin Xiu was really sent by Mr. Lu, Lin Xiu did not understand the question and Bai Yu pretended that everyone had heard about him and Lin Xiu should call him the fourth lord. Lin Xiu agreed and wondered who he should protect, Bai Yu was angry that he was not respected. Uncle Ray, who had not yet left, noticed Lin Xiu and called out to Bai Yu, saying that he was indeed dangerous and very strong. Then at night the car drove through the mountains, inside, Bai Mendi was watching the sleeping Lin Xiu. She was wondering if he was really a bodyguard and asked Uncle Ray about it, Uncle Ray asked not to worry, saying that Lin Xiu was almost equal to him in strength. Bai Mendi admitted that it was difficult for her to believe it and asked to look at Lin Xiu, calling him shameless. Uncle Ray explained that recently someone had his eye on her family and for her own safety, they would not stop along the way, but would go straight to Jingling. Bai Mendi was shocked by what she heard and did not know where to rest in this case, after all, who you said that they would go to the farmhouse first. Uncle Ray apologized and asked to rest in the car, Bai Mendi had no intention of doing this because she was a lady and should only spend the night in bed. In the end, Uncle Ray agreed to stay at the farmhouse. Arriving at the place, Bai Mendi thought that this place looked good. Uncle Ray began to wake up Lin Xiu, Lin Xiu asked if their mission was already over and if so, then he was leaving, Uncle Ray explained that they were not there yet and the mission would take a little longer. Getting out of the car, Lin Xiu thought that this would be a piece of cake, not knowing what he could do on the mission, because sleeping is the most boring thing. Another car drove up behind him and Captain Hu Yu, the head of security, said that Lin Xiu had neglected his uniform and was quite young, he advised me to go and rest, because I didn't like his attitude towards work. Lin Xiu stated that he was not a bodyguard from the very beginning and apologized if he somehow offended Hu Yu by doing so, he said that he was simply hired as an additional backup when everything goes wrong for them. Hu Yu got angry and asked what the boy meant and whether he doubted his professionalism. Captain Hu Yu asked Lin Xiu various questions, but they tried to calm him down, at that moment a scream was heard from the house. Everyone immediately started running into the house and as they ran they saw Bai Mendi sitting on the floor, she was frightened by the old woman who was standing with a candle. The grandmother apologized to her because she didn't want to scare her, Captain Hu Yu immediately began to find out how the old lady dared to offend their miss. Uncle Ray reassured him, saying that it was just his grandmother, according to him, the Bai family will have a hard time if they continue to be so rude to everyone indiscriminately. Approaching the old woman, Uncle Ray asked about the owner, she said that the owner was not yet there and, unfortunately for her, the lights were turned off for now, she asked me to wait here while they fixed everything. Lin Xiu suspected something was wrong and, looking at the old woman's hand, which had a candle in it, he noticed Ghost Chi, assuming that the old lady is a ghost. She was going to lead them all to their rooms upstairs, Lin Xiu was surprised by this. Having gone upstairs, the grandmother asked the remaining Lin Xiu why he was not coming, Lin Xiu asked him to tell him if his grandmother had ever dreamed of butterflies, because there was still a particle of her soul left on her, according to him, he doesn't care what they are up to and today is not the best day for them. The grandmother did not understand what he was talking about and asked for clarity, Lin Xiu ordered not to stand in their way and not to deal with ghosts anymore, he did not want to explain everything and asked not to blame him for the consequences. Bai Mendi, being in her room, was unhappy with today, since it was early, she was going to take a shower and go to bed. While she was going to the bathroom, someone was spying on her from the ventilation. At that moment, 
The grandmother came to her grandson, he was unhappy with this place because he couldn't spy on a girl in the shower, asking her to do something. The grandmother assured Xiaoli that the girl was his for the night and he had nothing to worry about, Xiaoli was impatient and wanted it right now. In that case, grandpa was going to start early, the grandmother warned that among the visitors there was a boy with cultivation and that one should be careful. Grandfather entered the room where Uncle Ray and Captain Hu Yu were, he praised them for their work and offered them tea to drink a little before going to bed. Uncle Ray thanked Grandpa and advised him to get some rest too, Captain Hu Yu thought Uncle Ray was too naive to be a bodyguard, suggesting that there might be sleeping pills in there. Grandfather did not understand why he was discovered so quickly, Uncle Ray was asking Hu Yu to show respect, Grandfather was going to leave it here and leave. Hu Yu asked the commander if he was the one who said to be more careful than to make a mistake, Lin Xiao, sitting on the sofa, expressed respect to Hu Yu for taking his work seriously. But Hu Yu went to the teapot and began to drink it, from what he saw, Lin Xiao was perplexed and warned them that there might be something mixed in the tea. Captain Hu Yu advised him to take care of himself, because he drank tea and is now completely fine, Uncle Ray listened to Lin Xiao's words and asked again if there was really something wrong with the tea. Lin Xiao didn't know what to do now and asked to look at them, who said that everything was fine, the people who drank tea began to fall asleep and the captain became convinced that Lin Xiao was right. Uncle Ray ordered Lin Xiao to protect Miss Bai, suddenly there was a scream, Uncle Ray realized that it was Miss Bai and ran to her room. Purple smoke wafted from the room, Uncle Ray ran up and tried to open the door, but nothing worked, then Lin Xiao was going to take everything upon himself. Approaching the door, he could easily open it with his palm, Uncle Ray wondered how this happened. When they entered the room, they saw Xiaoli mocking Miss Bai. Uncle Ray loaded a clip into the gun and began shooting, the bullets passed through the old woman, Lin Xiao clarified that bullets do not affect ghosts, offering to figure it out yourself. Lin Xiao ordered to leave the girl alone and he would spare the old lady equals, since it was late and he was tired, the old woman apologized, because she could not refuse her grandson. In this case, Lin Xiao decided to release the piece of ice, the old woman was shocked by what she saw, and the piece of ice reminded her that they had not seen each other for a long time. She is the sworn enemy of all ghostly cultivators, ice flame can absorb all types of ghostly energy. Even with the slightest knowledge of the origin of the ice flame, it is immediately clear that it feeds on ghosts, any ghost would rather run. The old woman said that no matter what, if anyone dares to disturb her grandson, he should die. But she didn't have time to do anything when she instantly turned into an ice statue. Miss Bai fell to the floor and Uncle Ray asked Lin Xiao if this was the end, Lin Xiao explained that Uncle Ray could try to catch the old man, and he would stay with Miss and protect him from all the ghosts. Uncle Ray ran away, and Lin Xiao asked by Mendy if she was injured, if not, he suggested that she sleep for now. The offer to sleep made her angry, because she took it as a joke on her, she also asked not to be left alone because she was too scared. After a while, Bai Mendy was already sitting on the bed, due to the awkward situation, Lin Xiao wanted to leave, but was stopped, Bai Mendy asked to stay with her as he is her bodyguard. In this case, Lin Xiao asked to wear something distracting, but Bai Mendy did not like it and she kicked him out. Lin Xiao began to leave when she immediately rushed to stop him, he asked her to make up her mind and she didn't want him to leave. Next, Bai Mendy was under the blanket and watched Lin Xiao, he reassured her that he was not going anywhere and had no intention of doing so. Deciding that he still had time to practice, he crossed his arms and burst into flames. In the morning, Uncle Ray showed Bai Mendy the people who dared to offend her and asked how to deal with them. Bai Mendy wondered what Lin Xiao would do with them, Lin Xiao replied that he would have followed her order. She got angry and ordered them to be handed over to the police, after a while the police arrived, Ning Lin Sang wondered who called the police station. Uncle Ray said that someone tried to kill their miss last night, Ning Lin Sang looked at her grandfather and Xiaoli and realized that they were ghost cultivators. She immediately asked who caught them, Uncle Ray said that it was Lin Xiao, Lin Xiao, and Bai Mendy did not expect such an answer. Ning Lin Sang beckoned Lin Xiao over, after seeing what the other police were doing, she ordered them to take the suspects and stop playing games. While walking with Lin Xiao, she asked about the Tao but he answered in the negative, turning around, 
she wondered who he was, Lin Xiao believed that he was not obliged to answer. Ning Lin Sang admitted that she is not evil, but simply that people who can catch a ghost are rare. Lin Xiao was surprised that the police cared so much about this, in response to this, she promised to remember him, then she thanked her and left. Next, a car with Bai Mendi drove up to the Jinling Stadium, Uncle Ray opened the door for her and declared that their mission was over and they were returning to Hai Province. Bai Mendi was dissatisfied with what she heard and asked to stay longer, Lin Xiao admitted that he had to go back to school in Hai Province, so he did not have time to linger here. Bai Mendi asked if Lin Xiao was still at school, and he asked if he looked like a schoolboy. She began to make excuses that this was not what she meant and offered to stay at least another day, Lin Xiao was already leaving and answered in the negative. Uncle Ray rode with Lin Xiao and asked him to tell the truth who he was, wondering if maybe they could teach him. Lin Xiao apologized because he couldn't teach anyone, Bai Mendi, who remained on the street, was met by grandfather Bai Yandong. While having lunch, she said that if it weren't for Lin Xiao, she would not have seen him today. Bai Yandong was wondering how he was hired into the Bai family, who contributed to this, Bai Mendi said that Uncle Wu invited him, and Uncle Ray already knew him. Grandfather asked her to be careful because their Bai family has been in danger lately, after Bai Mendi finished all her business, she would have to warn him first, he would send two professionals to accompany her on the way home. Bai Mendi thanked her grandfather for this and said that she decided not to go to the Academy of Performing Arts in Beijing, because she still had some plans. Grandfather asked about this, because it was her dream, according to Bai Mendi, she did not want to go far from her beloved grandfather and was going to enroll somewhere closer. Grandfather, without knowing why, had the feeling that it was not because of him, he was going to check Lin Xiao's background, assuming that they would even become friends. Next in the village in the suburbs, Uncle Ray asked Lin Xiao if he lived there, in response, he learned that his grandfather lived there. This answer made Uncle Ray wonder if Lin Xiao might be from the Huang family, Lin Xiao invited Uncle Ray to come over for a while and he happily agreed. As they approached Lin Xiao's grandfather's house, they noticed someone knocking on the door, a certain guy told me not to force him to use force, because everyone knows how it will end. Grandfather answered Huang Jun that he had no manners if he talked to his elders like that. Huang Jun wondered why he couldn't become friends with Xiao Tong, calling his grandfather cruel, he wanted to be introduced to Xiao Tong. Uncle Ray became convinced that Lin Xiao was from the Huang family and was surprised at how low the clan could fall. Lin Xiao was angry and declared that this was his home, the crowd of people turned to look at him and Huang Jun ordered him not to get involved in other people's affairs, because this is his territory. Uncle Ray said that it was a pitiful scene, how could the Huang family fall so badly, and according to him, it was inevitable. Hearing this, Huang Jun was angry. Lin Xiao voiced his thoughts out loud that the guy was almost 30 years old and he was engaged in hitting on and pestering defenseless girls. Huang Jun got angry at these words and challenged them to fight, he ordered two guys to beat up Lin Xiao and Uncle Ray because they came to their village from the city to cause trouble. One of the guys called anyone and got ready to fight, Uncle Ray was going to take over, assuring him that three seconds would be enough to deal with him. Rushing, he quickly dealt with the two guys, Uncle Ray thought it was too slow, chalking it up to old age. Lin Xiao praised him, Huang Jun was shocked by what he saw and, pointing to Uncle Ray, said that he dared to go against his guys. Uncle Ray didn't see a problem with this, pointing out what Huang Jun is worth and calling him trash. Huang Jun ordered to bring more people because he wanted to kill them, unexpectedly, Lin Xiao grabbed him by the jacket and lifted him off the ground. Lin Xiao wondered who Huang Jun was going to kill, their conversation was interrupted by the head of the Huang family, Huang Zhenong. The guys began to tell that Huang Zhong tried to deal with Lin Xiao and Uncle Ray, but they turned out to be too strong. Lin Xiao released Huang Zhong and was asked by Huang Zhenong what this meant, ordering him to explain. Uncle Ray was surprised that they wanted to hear an explanation and in this case asked to wait, since Lin Xiao had not finished yet. Huang Zhong was angry because of Lin Xiao's action and began to ask questions, but before he could finish speaking, Lin Xiao hit him. The Huang family was shocked by this action, Huang Zhenong did not understand what Lin Xiao was doing to his grandson, ordering him to stop. According to Lin Xiao, he teaches him manners, at this moment, Huang Zhong's mother made her way through the crowd. 
She rushed to her son to find out what had happened, she asked him to wake up and not scare her like that, Lin Xiao explained that he would not die from a slap. Huang Zhenong slammed his cane and declared that Lin Xiao dared to ignore him and would pay for his actions. Lin Xiao and Uncle Ray began to be surrounded by a crowd of people, Huang Zhenong wanted them to explain everything to him and not even try to leave this city, since he would not allow it. Lin Xiao turned to Uncle Ray, asking if he had changed his mind about messing with him, because he was always haunted by the same problems, Uncle Ray believed that they should deal with them quickly and admitted that he would like the same luck. According to him, these losers won't even come down for a warm-up, and if Lin Xiao had not started this, he would have started it himself, because he cannot tolerate such behavior. Huang Zhenong became more angry than ever because he was being ignored and ordered them to be punished. Lin Xiao was already ready to fight when he heard a request from his brother not to do this, it was Lin Xiao's grandfather who came outside. He asked Huang Zhenong to stop this now, since Lin Xiao is their family and he understands what is meant. Huang Zhenong did not believe this and asked again, the grandfather confirmed that it was his grandson and introduced him. People were surprised because they thought that both of them were dead, but in reality they were causing problems for the Huang family, one of the girls did not believe that Lin Xiao was from their family. Grandfather explained it as a simple group of small children who got into a fight, Huang Zhenong was unhappy, because if these were ordinary banks, he would have easily killed them, however, the boy has roots from the Huang family. Huang Yong's mother didn't care, she asked if Lin Xiao's mother taught him manners before she died, and today she was going to teach him what his mother had not taught him. Without letting her finish, Lin Xiao slapped her across the face, he looked at her menacingly and asked if she wanted to die, saying something about his mother. Huang Zhenong shamed his third brother's grandson, suggesting that he wanted to stand up to the Huang family, and ordered his grandfather to teach him manners. The grandfather got angry and said that it was their lustful teenagers who were bothering his grandson's guests, deciding that it was all over, he called Lin Xiao and was about to go home. Huang Zhenong looked at him menacingly and admitted that from that moment on he no longer wanted to see him, he hoped that his grandson would not cause them any more problems. Huang Yong tried to say something to Huang Zhenong, but he told him to go home and not disgrace him. Arriving home, Xiao Teng immediately began asking about their well-being, Grandfather explained to Lin Xiao that he was too impulsive and they would remember this for the rest of their lives. Lin Xiao assured his grandfather that nothing would happen to him and his grandfather agreed. Deciding that these sad events were enough, Xiao Teng wanted to have some fun, Lin Xiao confirmed this and asked what they were having for dinner. Next on Haiti Street, Wang Yang looked around and ran into an alley, entering the room, he believed that he had to find Lin Xiao, otherwise he might become homeless. Wang Yang didn't understand who the people were who were looking for him, even dragging the Bai family into this, he didn't know how to find his friend now if he had to constantly hide. Three days later at the Haitian Academy of Arts, Lin Xiao and Xiao Teng stood with their luggage, he was pleased that finally everything was quiet and calm and now he could enjoy the university. Xiao Teng rushed to the university first and called Lin Xiao with her, he couldn't believe that he took all these things. At this moment, Duan Xiaowen called out to him and asked if he was new. Lin Xiao confirmed this, Xiaowen introduced herself and said that she was in charge of the freshmen, she asked me to follow her. Lin Xiao understood and beckoned Xiao Teng to come with them, he introduced Xiaowen as the guide and that she would take them to the dormitory. Xiao Teng greeted her kindly, Xiaowen liked the way they both looked and asked them to follow her. Xiao Teng walked with Lin Xiao and noticed that the girl was beautiful, but Lin Xiao did not want to continue the conversation. She continued to ask questions, but Lin Xiao asked her to be a little more serious. Upon reaching the place, Xiaowen stated that this is a girl's dormitory and no guys, if she needed help with things, she offered her help. Xiao Teng picked up her suitcases and left, asking her to take Lin Xiao to the dormitory. Lin Xiao and Xiaowen were heading towards the dormitory, on the way, she noticed that his girlfriend was cute and asked how they met. Lin Xiao explained that she is not his girlfriend, but rather like a sister, from what she heard, she immediately apologized for misunderstanding. Suddenly there was a phone call, where Xiao Wen was informed about a mouse in the bedroom and asked for help. Xiao Wen rushed to Lin Xiao, begging her to do a favor for Sister Xiao. Walking through the women's dormitory, Lin Xiao wasn't sure if he was allowed to go there, Xiao Wen calmed him down, 
telling him that it was the opening season of the university, so the boys were helping the girls with their luggage. Having opened the door, they immediately began to find out where the pest was and saw Miao Siki. The door slammed in front of Lin Xiao and Miao Shichi began to ask Xiao Wen who he was and what he was doing here. Xiao Wen admitted that he is a new student and she is also afraid of mice, so she brought him here. Having let Lin Xiao into the room, he was informed that there was a mouse under the bed and offered a mop to help. Lin Xiao refused this, Xiao Wen noticed that first graders always want to show off in front of high school students, Miao Siki did not understand how he was going to catch the mouse with his bare hands, because it was very big. Lin Xiao crawled under the beds and pointed his hand at the mouse, from which an attractive yellow light appeared, that's how he caught the mouse. The girls were surprised at how he did it, but he only said that she herself fell into the trap. Anyway, they thanked him for his help and he left. Next, Lin Xiao came to the men's dormitory, to room number 502. Entering the room, he immediately saw his roommate, Chu Nan, looking at something on his phone. Lin Xiao was interested in what he was looking at and took a closer look, Chu Nan was suddenly afraid. At this moment, roommate Ran Guangbiao came in and introduced himself to everyone that his name was Biaozi. The door also opened and another roommate, Zhang Kai, walked in, they all met together and he took out information from his backpack about girls in graduation classes. Chu Nan was pleased with this and noticed one of the girls. Unexpectedly, Lin Xiao called Xiao Teng and asked why he had not come down yet, because they were going to have lunch together, Zhang Kai was shocked that he found the girl so quickly. Zhang Kai was shocked and thought that he was an honest person, not expecting to see such a thing from him, Lin Xiao didn't understand why he cared about his personal life, and in response offered to have lunch together. Zhang Kai said that he always has time for lunch with beautiful girls, Chu Nan believed that it was better to be him than to be low grade like the others, he thought that his girlfriend must have a couple of other beautiful girlfriends. When they went outside, they saw Xiao Teng coming out of the girl's dormitory and were shocked by her beauty. After meeting her, Lin Xiao introduced Xiao Teng to his classmates who wanted to meet her. Xiao Teng admitted that she was glad to meet them, Chu Nan looked at her with a loving gaze and Zhang Kai hit him, telling him not to look at her like that, because it was not cultural. Xiao Ting wondered where they would go to eat, Lin Xiao suggested going to some cafe near the university, suddenly, all the girls began to run somewhere in a large crowd. Zhang Kai stopped one guy and asked what was happening, the guy said that Bai Mendi was at their university and everyone should hurry. They were shocked by what they heard and wanted to see her, Lin Xiao asked brother Biao if he would go, brother Bai wondered who Bai Mendi was. Xiao Ting said that Bai Mendi is a very talented star and called to go see. Coming out of the crowd, Captain Hu Yu noticed Lin Xiao and reported this to Bai Mendi. Bai Mendi saw him and said hello, Chu Nan and Zhang Kai were completely shocked that they knew each other. She approached Lin Xiao and said that she would also study here, saying that they would be together in the future, she asked if he would be happy. Lin Xiao shook her hand, saying that he would definitely wait, after which Bai Mendi said goodbye to him and left. Zhang Kai and Chu Nan loomed over Lin Xiao, they didn't understand what was happening and why the superstar knew him. Xiao Teng was also curious about how they met Bai Mendi, Lin Xiao recalled his part-time job as a bodyguard for the Bai family, he had to protect her. The guys also didn't believe that he was a bodyguard, Lin Xiao said that he studied some martial arts. Zhang Kai never thought that Lin Xiao studied martial arts, Lin Xiao advised not to judge a book by its cover and suggested going to eat. Next, sitting at the table, Zhang Kai assured that there were top-class girls there, and now Bai Mendi will still be here. Chu Nan reminded that there was a girl among them and there was no need to talk about such things, Zhang Kai was angry that he was still alone and in agony. He turned to Chu Nan and said that last year there were a lot of pretty girls, asking if he liked those who were older. Suddenly two girls came from behind and they noticed it, Chu Nan thought that these were senior students, and Zhang Kai explained that on the left was Miao Siki, one of the most beautiful sophomores. Xiao Wen called out to Lin Xiao and was pleasantly surprised by the coincidence, Miao Siki was convinced that it was him and suggested that she sit in another place, since she did not want to talk to the pervert. Zhang Kai and Chu Nan were shocked again and wondered what Lin Xiao had done to be called a pervert. At this moment, a man named Luo Cheng came and wondered if this was the place. Zhang Kai sat at the table, poured alcohol and cried because he did not believe that he would ever meet his soul mate, 
he believed that someone like him also needed love, and Lin Xiao destroyed all his fantasies about a harem. Chu Nan was also upset and insisted that Zhang Kai still has a chance, but if you look at him, he is destined to always be alone. Xiao Wan came over and encouraged them that they would find a wonderful girl in the future and asked them to sit down. The guys immediately began to make way for them, Miao Siki sat next to Lin Xiao and did not want to talk to him. Zhang Kai approached Miao Shiqi and wanted to offer something delicious, Miao Siki refused, saying that she preferred barbecue and meat, offering it to him. Some guys watched this from the sidelines and noticed that Miao Siki was sitting with those guys. They were angry that these guys came out of nowhere, Zhang Kai offered barbecue according to her grandmother's personal recipe. The guy came up behind him and threw Zhang Kai away, he didn't understand who dared to do this. The guy turned to Lin Xiao and asked who dared to sit with his girlfriend. Miao Siki aggressively replied that he was not her boyfriend and told her to stop spreading false rumors. The guy said that he was not communicating with her, but was addressing Lin Xiao, who was sitting next to her. Chu Nan tried to dilute the situation, saying that they just wanted to eat, but before he could finish speaking, the guy ordered him to shut up, otherwise he would beat him up. The guy continued to threaten Lin Xiao, Lin Xiao responded by grabbing his finger and starting to hurt him. Lin Xiao let him go and told him to get out of there now, the guy was shocked that they dared to hit him and began to attack him. Suddenly, Biaozi appeared in front of the guy, the guy got scared and called them to come to the school gates at 6 o'clock in the evening. Lin Xiao was indifferent and advised calling everyone he could, the guy agreed and promised to tear off his finger, he called his friends and left. Chu Nan praised brother Biao for putting pressure on them and keeping them at bay, according to Zhang Kai, this is a problem and Lin Xiao should not agree with him. Lin Xiao was curious about the reason, Zhang Kai said that this man's name is Wang Chang and he has a cousin named Wang Wei, who is a criminal, he beats everyone in fights and if Wang Chang calls him, then they should expect trouble. Miao Siki took the blame and was about to go to Wang Chang to talk and explain, turning around and trying to leave, Lin Xiao took her hand and asked her to sit down and leave these matters to him. Next, Wang Chang called his older brother and asked him to come to the school gate at 6 p.m. to help him in the fight. Wang Wei didn't understand whether it was urgent and suggested changing the time, Wang Chang was angry because everyone heard his words and if he went to change the time, they would laugh at him. Wang Wei explained that the point was not that he could not help him, but that he was having dinner with an influential person tonight and he simply could not refuse. Wang Chang didn't know what kind of influential person he was, more important than his younger brother's life, Wang Wei replied that this was the fourth master Bai, Bai Yi. Wang Chang was shocked that his brother was going to have dinner with the fourth master of the Bai family, asking about it again, Wang Wei promised to send several brothers to come to his aid and they should be enough. Lin Xiao, in turn, assured that he also had someone and called Uncle Ray, Uncle Ray wondered why Lin Xiao decided to call him. Lin Xiao thought that the Bai family could help him since he had a problem. Uncle Ray asked to tell him right now about what happened, promising to help him, Lin Xiao said that this was an ordinary student fight, but Uncle Ray knew that he could not show his strength to ordinary people, so he could only rely on him. Uncle Ray was amused and believed that from the very beginning it should have been left to him. Lin Xiao was sure that they had figured it out, Zhang Kai asked Lin Xiao if he was sure that he wanted to meet with him, since Wang Wei was from the Dark World, they offered to go to a meeting instead and apologize. Brother Biao laughed and promised to help him in the fight, saying that he was not afraid, Lin Xiao reassured them that he knew how to deal with such matters. In that case, Zhang Kai was going to go and call someone, Chu Nan also agreed to go and fight. Bai Yaodong further confirmed that he was told about the matter, he said to try our best to satisfy Lin Xiao's demand since he is a respected guest of their Bai family. After calling Bai Yi, he said that tonight, near the entrance to the art school, someone wanted to deal with little brother Lin and ordered him to take care of this matter. Bai Yi heard his father and called secretary Zhao to say that dinner with Wang Wei tonight was cancelled as he had a small matter to deal with. After a while, Wang Wei called his brother and said that fourth Mr. Bai's people had just called and said that the dinner was cancelled and they didn't know what was going on, therefore, he is free and can come help him. Wang Chang was happy and planned to wait for him in the evening, he was confident that Lin Xiao would get what he deserved. At 5.50 pm, Wang Chang and two boys were standing at the school gate, one of them suggested calling a few more, 
since there were only three of them. Wang Chang thought that this was no use, since later the elder brother would show them what the real underworld was. The guy also asked if Wang Chang had mentioned the fourth master of the Bai family in the phone conversation. Wang Chang boasted that the fourth mister, Bai, and his eldest were best friends, even dinner, which was supposed to take place this evening, was disrupted because his older brother decided to help him. The guys were surprised by Wang Wei and understood that no matter what happened to them in Hai province, he would be able to help. At that moment, a car drove up and Wang Wei got out with several people, he immediately wondered where the guy he was supposed to meet was. Then Lin Xiao and his roommates and girls appeared, Wang Chang indicated to his brother that they had arrived. A white car drove up nearby and Zhang Kai's cousin got out, the cousin noticed that Wang Wei was there and was unpleasantly surprised. Zhang Kai's cousin Zhang Cheng was angry and asked how he managed to provoke Wang Wei. Lin Xiao noticed that the meeting was scheduled for him, and not for the younger Kai, Zhang Kai introduced Lin Xiao as a roommate, but this event was caused by everyone present there. Zhang Cheng praised Zhang Kai for his loyalty, but warned against Wang Wei because he is very influential and strong. Zhang Kai didn't understand what was wrong, because nothing had happened yet, and his cousin was so scared, it wasn't like him, Zhang Cheng explained that he was doing this for their own good and advised them to listen to him, not to mess with Wang Wei. The guys began to dissuade Lin Xiao from doing anything, but Lin Xiao was not afraid and sent them to hide away and watch the show. Zhang Kai decided that he wanted to go with Lin Xiao, but his cousin stopped him, Lin Xiao advised to listen to his cousin, as he would be fine. Approaching them, Lin Xiao immediately asked who he was calling, Lin Xiao just picked up the phone and urged him to come straight there. Wang Wei ordered the person Lin Xiao called to come outside, he wanted to see what province this vegetable was from that he dared to call him. Next, Lin Xiao approached Wang Wei with a huge crowd of people, Wang Wei and everyone else were shocked. And Bai Yi came out of the crowd, asking about the vegetable and asking if he had the strength to get involved in this matter. Wang Chang didn't understand what was going on and asked about the fourth mister, Bai, Wang Wei just hit him and began to apologize, saying that he did not know that he was his brother. Bai Yi turned to Lin Xiao, wondering what to do with them next, Lin Xiao wished that they would not appear in this school from now on. Wang Wei and everyone else were shocked by what they heard, and Bai Yi ordered the order to proceed. They were all taken away and Wang Wei tried to somehow explain to Bai Yi that he was the person with whom dinner had failed today. Addressing Lin Xiao, Bai Yi promised that he would not be disturbed again, Lin Xiao did not expect that he would bring so many people. Bai Yi explained that he is a respected guest of the Bai family and his affairs are the affairs of his Bai family, Lin Xiao thanked them for their help and promised to do his best to repay them. Watched from the sidelines by Chu Nan and Zhang Kai and his cousin, who could not believe that this was their neighbor. In the evening, Zhang Kai praised Lin Xiao that he knew the fourth master Bai, Lin Xiao said that he could introduce them. Zhang Kai asked to forget about it, since the fourth gentleman is too charismatic and he does not dare to speak in front of him. Remembering that military training began tomorrow, Lin Xiao wished everyone good night. Lin Xiao understood that if he was looking for Wai Yang, then help would not hurt him and let the Bai family do this, and he himself was going to stay there for a while. The next morning, Lin Xiao, Zhang Kai, and Xiao Teng stood on the sports ground. Their new instructor, who was introduced as Luo Cheng, a military training instructor, arrived in a car, this time, military training will be under his control. Miao Siki also presented herself as the leader of this military training. There were requests from the side to wait for someone a little, turning around, everyone saw that it was by Monday apologizing for being late. The guys were shocked that Bai Monday was in military training with them. Luo Cheng noticed her beauty and ordered her to get into formation so that this would not happen again in the future. He explained that since this was military training, he would let them experience the real life of a soldier and told everyone to get into the cars. Lin Xiao passed by him and noticed the devil aura in his hand, as he got into the car, he thought about it. But he was interrupted by Miao Siki, who sat down next to him and thanked him for yesterday, Lin Xiao thought it was nothing and asked why she wanted to go along. According to Miao Siki, as the leader of the squad, she is tasked with accompanying them, this time there will be survival in the wild, so she will take care of them. Bai Mendi noticed that Lin Xiao was sitting in the car and sat down next to him, she was glad that they were together again. Sitting next to Lin Xiao, 
Miao Siki wondered if the girl was a superstar. Then the students arrived at their destination, in front of them was a beautiful lake, which surprised them. Luo Ching explained that this military training was designed for them to live in the mountains in the open air for seven days. Everyone was surprised by this statement, since some did not take food, others did not take a change of clothes and did not know how to take a shower. They did not know what to do if there were wild animals in the mountains, and if there were insects in the mountains, Lin Xiu considered this military training very simple, and Miao Shichi, standing next to him, wondered what could happen while he lived with Lin Xiu for a week. Someone threatened Luo Cheng, saying that his father worked in a high-ranking position and if anything happened to him, it would be bad, someone was about to return home and this talk angered Luo Cheng. Lin Xiao noticed that Luo Cheng was a rank 1 cultivator and was wondering who the arriving instructor actually was. Luo Cheng stated that when their eyes were closed, he would scatter them to different places, only survivors will be considered to have passed the test. Zhang Kai was afraid that there was a chance of dying, Luo Cheng sarcastically asked him about this. The students began to be blindfolded, Lin Xiao was curious to see what Luo Cheng was up to in the end. Miao Shichi asked Luo Qin if she would follow them from the rear, but he stated that she would go with them. He blindfolded her and, despite her excuses, sent her with everyone. Turning around, he saw that a pink-haired girl in a bandage was standing next to him. Half an hour later, the girl from the squad took off the bandage and was surprised that there were no people, it was also very hot. Looking at the river, she saw a very beautiful picture and ran towards it, after entering the water, Luo Cheng suddenly appeared behind her and grabbed her. The girl didn't understand who it was and immediately asked to let her go, Luo Cheng took her with him to take the exam. Next, Luo Cheng mocked the girl in the forest, and Lin Xiao was taken further. Lin Xiao, using his agility, stunned the guy who was leading him. After thinking it over carefully, he still felt something was wrong, turning to the piece of ice, he asked to help him find the location of the guys. Next, Deacon Zheng called Luo Cheng and reminded him about the mission, so that he doesn't go too far out of bounds. Luo Cheng, in turn, promised to bring him the longevity fruit. Deacon Zheng explained that there was one creature near the longevity fruit, using these students, he had to feed him enough and then there should be no problems. Having reached the fruit of longevity with the girl, he threw her to the floor. A huge spirit appeared and ate her, Luo Cheng informed him that there were still forty disciples in these mountains and everyone was wandering alone, he would be able to eat enough. Having picked the fruit, Luo Cheng was convinced that it was easier to get it, but he felt a little sorry for the students. Then the squad gathered together, Xiao Teng was conducting roll call and reported to Lin Xiao that a student named Zheng Qiu was missing. 